Good morning and a very warm welcome to Bratislava in Slovakia for the final day of racing here at the ICF. Canoe Slalom World Cup 2019 is race two of the five race series. And yesterday, well, we had the men's C1 and the women's K1 in action. Today, we've got the women's C1 and the men's K1 in action this morning. And we've got extreme slalom this afternoon. But it's semi-finals time and we have, well, 20, 215 athletes from over 30 countries here in Bratislava to compete in this second round of the ICF World Cup. But we're starting to get into the sharp end of racing here on this uh, great white water course here. Just about 20 kilometers outside of the city center in Bratislava and off the mighty river Danube. Myself, Andy Maddock, will bring you all the action as it unfolds. And alongside me from the British team, Amber Maslin. Welcome, Amber, to the commentary box. Hi, Andy. Thanks for welcoming me. So it is semi-finals time. It's the women's C1. 30 boats, the fastest 30 boats, qualify through into the semi-final. Those were the heats on Friday. And just 10 spots available in the final on well, that starts at 12 o'clock this afternoon, Central European time. So here's the start list. 30 boats. They go in reverse order of their performance in those heats. So the last boats will be, well, in theory, the fastest boats here. Ana Sachila of Brazil set the pace on Friday. She goes off last in the semi-final. But look at that. We've got the likes of Jessica Fox. The uh, multiple world champion, Teresa Fisher over, who you can never rule out. And uh, with three Brits in the top ten as well. Who are you most looking forward to watching in this semi-final, Amber? Um, I'm looking forward to seeing all the Slovak girls racing on this course. It's super technical, um, really difficult middle section. <clears throat> and there's a move at the bottom drop that's costing a lot of people a lot of time. So super stoked to watch them. Of course, I'm excited to watch the British girls. We have the best uh, C1 ladies in the world. Um, even our second three boats, our B team, are some of the most decorated paddles on the circuit. So super excited to see what they can do. Well, the race is underway. Lena Strudlin of Germany, the 29-year-old, is on course. And, uh, well, she's been racing in the women's C1 from the start, really, from when it first entered the World Championship program back in 2010. She's coming into this curl move super nice. You have to wait for the curl on the left-hand side. We can see that she's using the spin in the eddy to get around for gate five. She's going to use the curl to come up into the up left, make sure that she gets onto the back of it, and that was super nice into the back of the upstream. So our course designers have set a pretty challenging course, and this white water course, you've paddled it over the, well, many times, but over the course of this week, and uh, it's pretty challenging without the gates. So the uh, course designers have gone straight in for a tricky section on that top six gates. Yeah, it's a really difficult move. They've kind of gone a little against the flow of the water. I know there's a few local paddlers who are a bit upset that their favorite moves aren't in the course. Um, but it's really challenging. It means that everyone's on an even playing field and we're really seeing what the best paddlers can do. Well. I think in terms of the uh, qualification, the job here is obviously making it through safely into the top 10. And I would say it's not taking too many risks on this course. Yeah, I'd say that there's nothing to gain by trying to take these moves on like a hero. I think you need to get through them clean. And I think if you can use all the features exactly how they're supposed to be used. She's flying through this section. That's super nice through that downstream. I think we're going to see some ah, little bit late for the second downstream on that stagger. Um, I think we're going to see some emergency moves being taken in that stopper section. It is difficult. We saw the K1 women struggling with it a little yesterday as well, and the C1 men, of course. Um, and this upstream is in a difficult position. So they put it kind of near the eddy line compared to how it normally is in training. Um, so you have to jump into the back of it and make sure that you hold that flow on your paddle because if you let go, you end up sliding to the back of the eddy. Well, 23 gates is the task, and Lena Stuttgart of Germany has put in a respectable first run here. So uh, she has set the pace for everybody to follow. 126.71, that includes four seconds of penalties. Well, we know, the only information we really have is we know the fastest women in the kayak yesterday were just under 100 seconds. 97 was uh, the winner from Austria, Karina Kunla, and then in the men's C1. 
then it was around about 94 seconds. I would be guessing that around about 110 might be what's required to win. I think, yeah, I think to medal around about 110. It'll be interesting to see what ends up in the cutoff for the final move because I think we'll get some people absolutely smashing every single move and then some people who survive the course really well. Um, so interesting to see. Hannah Thomas is on course now. Um, she was an experienced junior from London and now she trains full time in New Zealand um, on the amazing Wero Whitewater course, which is huge. It's really technical, really pushy course. So you can see that she's really developed her paddling over the last two years. Well, yes, she's uh, emigrated essentially to New Zealand. And uh, now, well, New Zealand had a good day yesterday here in Bratislava <laughs> because uh, Luca Jones took silver in the women's kayak final. So uh, can she make it through to the final? Well, at the moment, she looks like she's certainly keeping it fairly solid. No additional penalties added on, and she's in touch with Stucklin of Germany. Yeah, she's looking really composed through here. I wonder if she'll go for... Ah, she just slid past gate 18. The difficult part of this is that 17's right on the end of the stopper, so you have to be able to balance the boat and turn it really sharply at the same time without sliding down the stream. And it's super difficult, especially in a C1. Um, so I think we'll see the fastest girls, making sure that they're not sliding at all there. Hannah just jumped really nicely into the back of gate 21. This is a difficult part of the course because your arms are really burning by this point. And you want to be... Oh, she just missed a stroke but caught it on the crossbar. It was brutal, but she's managed to hold it. Although sliding really low in the eddy, so I think she's lost quite a lot of time there. Yeah, so you can see Hannah Thomas is a respectable run here, but the time is ticking away now. Just every little push around, and you can see you get a real scale of the uh, force of the white water there. Hannah Thomas for New Zealand into second place. Remember, 30 boats going for just 10 spots in the final, and already on the top part of the course, it's Victoria Us of the Ukraine. Yeah, Victoria is super experienced paddler. We saw her in Rio showing a really respectable run um, on that course. That was difficult and technical. Um, so she's a really nice paddler to watch. Um, really technical, really strong. It's good to see her racing C1 now. I think she'll probably put down quite a good time here if she can hold the moves. So she's been on the circuit, as you say, Amber, for quite some time. Very experienced. And, uh, well, on her day, she can really put the paddling together and she certainly looks like she's got the feel of the white water yeah she was super nice in gate 12 there this is really an experience move because you have to be able to keep the boat flat on both ends rather than letting the eddy take you and you can see the younger paddlers perhaps dipping the tail a bit to get a nicer turn and then being carried upstream so that they come a little weight onto the up well this we've talked a lot in the sport of canoe slalom how important it is to work in harmony with the white water and here in bratislava this big big white water course is critical to do that and but again so an advantage early on but that advantage is gone now as uh, gate 17 causes problems again she got some really nice movement through gate 16 there uh, sorry through 17 she had such a nice right to left movement but it meant that she had to really fight to get back to the right hand side and that was really hard for her and you can see her sliding really low in this last upstream and um, in situations like this it's better to come right to the back of the eddy so you can use that flow but then again you can see what's just happened here she's lost her nose a little now she's having to fight to get back right for the last upstream so a little bit low so if you are not familiar with this great sport of canoe slalom it's a test of physical mental and technical skill against this white water and the green and white gates in a downstream direction the red and white gates in an upstream direction and victoria us of the ukraine into second place so stuckling of germany still our early leader as now the first of our french paddlers is i think only two of the three french paddlers qualify through to the semi-final and it's claire jacquet of france now leading the charge yeah this is a super high pressure race for the french she's four seconds up on the split so she's looking great and that's also with a touch so that's actually six seconds raw time up on the split um, yeah, the French have a tough race today because it's a, such a difficult course and um, so technical. The conditions aren't quite perfect for racing. It's really rainy and a little bit windy, um, but it's also their Olympic selection series. Um, so they're definitely feeling the pressure today. Although Claire Jacquet seems that she's holding it together really nicely, really flat boat. Well, Claire was uh, seventh last weekend at Lee Valley in the first of the five ICF World Cup races of the 2019 season. So she 
has got that proven ability to get into the final. And look at that, nine seconds up on the split at the moment, and she delivers this move 17-18. Oh. Not the plan A, I don't think, but she's keeping it on track. That was super nice. She used a sort of sculling pushback to go through the dance to make sure that she didn't lose the nose at all. She's a little low into this upstream, but she's carrying a lot of speed from the top section, so I think she can hang on to that lead if she gets into this upright really nicely. <gasps> Wow, oh. she's going to have to go back. Wow, and it's gr great reactions there because uh, damage limitation, and uh, I think she's still on track to take the race lead. Claire Jacquet of France just showing one two-second penalty at the moment as she comes down towards gate 23. And such a promising run, and she just having to hold on on the bottom section, but into the race lead, oh. Claire Jacquet of France now. I don't think she'll be too stoked with that. She was definitely really on track for a huge lead there and then had a problem in the last up right well the job is really to get through into the final 30 boats here qualify through to the semi-final and uh, we started with 46 boats then we got to 30 now we're looking to get to 10 that's uh whoa. Oh. and wow there's a big surprise because there is a big favorite for making the final and uh it, Alia, Kozarok doesn't make it through into the upstream six for Slovenia. Yeah, this is a deadly section because as soon as you fall back down that stop, there's not many ways of getting back up uh, without a huge sprint. So I think she'll be throwing away more than 50 seconds trying to get back for that. So, well, that's a good example of uh, how you can't win the race on the top section, but unfortunately you can lose it. And yeah. uh, we saw that a little bit in yesterday's racing in the men's C1 and the women's K1. Just uh, how many uh, penalties were picked up on the top section that yeah. uh, really made it difficult for people to aim for the top of the podium. Yeah, there was some really upsets about the uh, the first few gates, which I was surprised by because actually um, there wasn't too much difference in the way each man uh, or each, and the K1 women as well didn't uh, complete the move. There wasn't too much scope for mistakes. There was just surviving it and making sure that they got smoothly through the move. Although here you can see that there's a lot to be gained from taking the stopper really nicely over to the left, turning flat on the top of the curl. And making sure you get back to the right again for this down but she's really tired now i think maybe her heart isn't in it after her problems with gate six so a second 50 second penalty picked up unfortunately for alia kozorog of oh. slovenia but that is how to do the upstream gate 21. she's absolutely sent gate 21 um that's kind of gutting i guess it'd be really good for the other girls to watch who may be waiting for a later run um yeah, so it'd be interesting easy. to see yesterday in the men's C1 final, we saw a lot of time in that gate 21 from the athletes who wouldn't switch. Yeah. So Franz Anton actually, who, who won the race, uh, lost a, a big amount of time by doing it on his crossbow. Yeah, We'd we... expect most of the women C1 to, to switch sides in order to uh, deliver that move. Yeah, we saw Casey Eichfeld um, switch in the bottom move and it really helped him get tight into the upstream. I was speaking to Ailey Gibson earlier on and we were discussing how many times she'd be switching between gates 9 and 16. <laughs> um, I think quite a few, but when you see how fast the girls can do it, I think the men can really watch the young women and take a lesson from the way that they use their crossbow switch. Well, on course now for Hungary, it's Julia Schmidt just having to recirculate back for 12, which makes it difficult now to get into the upstream 13. And sure enough, an extra spin required in order to get tight into the red and white upstream gate 13. 12 is really difficult as a downstream because it's super deep into the eddy, so that when you turn around, you have to make sure that your tail stays out of the water so that you don't slide up the eddy and miss the spin. Well, Schmidt of Hungary now coming down. So this move here is a number of offset downstream gates, and particularly this move here, dropping into the hole, round oh. 17, and oh, problems there for Julia. Uh, whether she got 17 or not, we'll leave that to the judges, but she certainly didn't get 18, and unfortunately, then that will be her out of contention for a place in the oh. final and she just went downstream oh no she's going back for it uh, she nearly went downstream in above gate 21 you are now allowed to re-navigate the gate if you go in above the rules of change so you're allowed to go the wrong way through a gate as long as you can unthread it and paddle back up through it or back down through it before you navigate it correctly right. then it's no longer a 50 second penalty well, this is, whilst it's a problem for Julia Schmidt here, it's a great example of just how powerful
half of the white water mm -hmm. he is here on this Bratislava course. The drop at the bottom, nicknamed Niagara, I don't think we need to explain that, is uh, <laughs> nearly two metres in height. It's and three metres, actually. Uh, it's three metres from um, bottom of the water, like bottom of the riverbed to the top of the drop. And, uh, and it's actually not very deep when you uh, get to the bottom of the drop. You have to be careful a little bit with uh, what you commit to on your paddle. Is that right? Yeah, you don't want to be leaning on your paddle for balance. You really want to be using your boat to balance and your body to be keeping neutral. Because as soon as you start leaning on your paddle, you'll catch it on the rock underneath the eddy and really have some problems. Well, next on the course is a... Uh, well, she made a final last weekend in Lee Valley. It's Clara Olathabel of Spain. And uh, she was ninth in that final last weekend. She was a Junior World Championship finalist back in 2016. So another emerging talent. And the Spanish team, very good in the women's C1 event. Yeah, we've been training with the Spanish all week um, on the British slots. So, well, on the Spanish and British slots. Uh, so it's been really nice to watch her and see how she uses the water because she's a really small part. Paddler, um, and she really uses the moves to her advantage. That was beautiful through gate 17, really perfect through there. I think the other girls will be wanting to nail it the same like this. Yeah, so six seconds of penalty showing, so that could be a little bit costly in a reckoning. The leaderboard at the moment, Claire Jacquet of France still leading, 121.54, but low into the eddy for Ola Tharbel. Lena Stucklin of Germany still in second place. Victoria Us of the Ukraine in third at this point. We've had six boats down and it's so important to get that stroke into the upstream 22. Yeah, you can see the girls are trying to take a lot of angle into gate 22 so that they can jump with their right stroke down onto it. The brightest lever, the key to the whole course is being able to keep your nose down while you navigate all the moves in the upstreams. Um, but for the C1 girls, it's really hard. The, the water's moving very powerfully over to the left with a really strong curl. So the amount you have to jump there is brutal. So Clara Olathabel of Spain goes into fourth place as we watch, well, uh, what I would say, one of the stars of yesterday's K1 performance. Would you agree, Amber? Yeah, um, Evie, or Evie, um, is so new to the circuit. She's just 15 years old, um, and she was in the K1 women's final yesterday. She has a really distinctive pace rate, like a really distinctive stroke rate, and um, she just goes, seems to go as hard as she can, and it doesn't really change no matter what the, mo uh, what the move is. Um, it's so cool to see a younger paddler keeping very calm and making sure that she's not rushing through the moves here. I think there may be some difficulties with the higher experience moves down the bottom, but it's super cool to see her paddling so well. Well, let's watch Evie Leapfart of the United States of America. And yes, just 15 years of age was, has been uh, desperately waiting to have her 15th birthday so that she can race in international competition. And well, I think we can see why, because she uh, lit up yesterday's final and well, particularly the semi-final in the women's K1 event. And let's watch down as she comes through this tricky move 17. Oh, that was really nice, very tight on gate 17, but she's gone forward through the stagger. It's super nice. In the K1 women's final yesterday, she was three seconds fastest on the top split, uh, which was very impressive given the caliber of paddlers that already come down. She's actually come really nice into gate 21. Uh, we'll just see how she handles gate 22. Well, this see has her been, switch. This has been the critical move in terms of jumping, and she's done it very nicely indeed. Yeah. Surely we are looking at a challenge to the current race leader, Claire Jacquet of France, oh, but sticky on the finish. It's going to be close, but Evie Leapfart of the United States of America into second place and a respectable run for the 15 year old. I love it though, she's obviously not happy with that. <laughs> and she's like really managing this high, high power, high technical course very well. She can be really proud of herself this weekend. So now for Spain, Nuria Villarubla who is an accomplished paddler, but early trouble here. And, well, what a recovery if she can compose herself. That's damage limitation. Nuria Villarubla showing her class there yeah. as she rescues what could have been a game over situation. Yeah, she really stayed with the flow there. She didn't let it phase her. You can see that she's staying really calm here, making sure that she's switching neutral boot. She's only five seconds down the split. We've seen that a lot of time can be made up in the middle and bottom sections. Well, she's a European champion. She was uh, silver as well in the 2019 European Championships earlier on this season. Disappointing last weekend at the first World Cup of the season. She didn't make the final, just finishing 13th in that, that semi-final. 
So she'll be looking to make up for that as she comes into the upstream gate 13. So Jacques of France still leading ahead of Evie Leapfarth of the United States of America and Lena Stucklin of Germany at this stage. Getting towards 10 boats down in this 30 boat ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup semi final. Yeah, Nuri is really staying on top of the water here. I'm excited to see how she takes this on. Really nice through gate 17. She did catch it with her nose, and I think she's going to fight for gate 18 now. This won't be the run she was looking to put down, but if she can nail the last two upstreams and get really smooth through the finish line, I think we may have a chance, although it will be really hard work now. Well, let's watch as she comes into the upstream gate 21. A huge amount of time in here. That Beautiful. is how to do it. <laughs> She really, you could see her check her edge before that, and now she's into the back of the up, a little lower than she'd want to be, I think, but you can see that she's making sure that the boat stays flat and retracking it for the last sprint. Ah, really heavy into the left-hand eddy. It's so hard to keep your nose down here. Well, she's going to be, I think, a little bit difficult there to get into the final fourth place. At the moment, 128.36. Still Claire Jacquet leading for France with a total of 121.54 as we watch Austria's Nadine Varachnik. And Nadine just took that on forward. It looked amazing. A little bit of a careless touch there on the outside blade, but you can see that she's absolutely smoking through this part now. I think we'll be looking at a really fast split time here. She just touched that gate with her tail, uh, which is really brutal. There's nothing you can do about a tail touch. Uh, we can't train for that. Um, but I think she's really on track for a fast run here if she can keep composed. So she has the early advantage. She uh, was fourth at the Senior World Championships last year in Rio de Janeiro, and she was the under-23 world champion in this event last year, so a successful 2018 season. Nadine trains on Vienna, which is a really boily, changeable course, so she'll suit somewhere like Bratislava. She'll understand how the water can move under the gate. See, she's managing those upstreams really, really nicely. I think she'll be really fast through this split be interesting to see how she takes it on well the advantage is gone now but she is in touch with our race leader and it uh, looks like she's delivered the move maybe not quite how the plan but she has delivered the move and kept it clean as she drops towards the uh, niagara and the upstream 21. yeah she went for that stagger the same way as claire jacket did and she took a sort of sculling paddle back well push back to make sure that she got through the stag really clean. See Nadine just jumped straight into the back of 22 there and she's going to get a nice track out for the last gate. I think the race lead is under threat now but uh, <gasps> whoa and to drama oh. and she's given up. So, I don't know why she's given up because she could have she could have looped back but it is that gate 23 the sting in the tail and Nadine Varachnik of Austria snatches defeat from the jaws of victory there and sure, I was sure she was going to take the race lead but such is the sport of canoe slalom it can be cruel at times and there's a great example of that I think it'll be especially cruel when she looks back on her video later perhaps because um, maybe with the paddleback she still would have gone into the lead well next up is uh, Victoria Dobrotskova Dobrotsvorska of the Ukraine who is a regular finalist in World Cup events never really made the big move big sort of podium move but maybe this is her opportunity because she looks very smooth on the top and 3.29 seconds the advantage she comes out of there clean so far and that's got to be good as she comes into the middle section yeah managing that section at the top clean is a really awesome start to a full run here um, you can see that people are having trouble to get their nose down into the back of 12. To get into 13 nicely, you have to be running up onto the weight, which means you need to be going backwards through 12, which feels a little unsafe when you're in a race mode and you want to be pointing at the finish line at all times. Um, but just making sure that you keep the boat flat and keep really calm at this point. So, looking good here. No penalties incurred so far, so clean at the moment. That's what we mean by uh, clean, no penalties and still has an advantage, although it has been trimmed. Oh, it's been trimmed, but she's just gone so nicely forward through this stagger. She's just keeping very composed through here, making sure that she sets up perfectly for this upstream. Uh, she's going to approach on the right-hand blade, um, and 
you can see that that's kind of difficult because the best way to get into 21 is to jump on the left but for a c1 that's not easy because it means you don't have a right hand blade to use if you'd lose your nose in the eddy so i think we'll see a lot of girls going in on the downstream blade well she's delivered the uh, move not probably the fastest through there 21 because she did take it on her crossbow but she's through 23 and she is going to take the race lead here victoria dobrochvorska of the ukraine <laughs> knows she has done a good run she really smashed that she can be super happy with that um, next we've got lois message from canada uh, lois is a younger paddler but she's quite experienced on bigger white water and it'd be really cool to see what she can do on this well, she was just 24th at Lee Valley, so a bit of a disappointment oh. there. And Lois Ooh. in trouble on gate five. And unfortunately, oh. that will incur, I think, a 50-second penalty. We'll have to wait and see yeah, you have on to, gate five. You have to navigate the gates upright, otherwise it's a 50-second penalty. I think she'll be upset with that, but she is carrying on with the run. There we have it. Conf confirmation, unfortunately, for Lois that a 50-second penalty on gate five. But I have to say, respect to Lois. How does she get into the upstream gate six from that position? <laughs> it's a really powerful curl going from right to left. Um, so any boat angle that's complementary to that will take you straight into that eddy. Um, even if you're aiming completely downstream and in no way moving towards that up, you will quite often go there anyway without meaning to. <laughs> so the lead at the moment. Victoria Toprots, Forska of the Ukraine. Uh, she has been given a two-second penalty. 119.30 is her total time. Claire Jacquet of France holding on to second place. Avi Leapfarth of the United States of America is in third place. Lena Stuttgart in fourth. Nuria Villarubla in fifth. Victoria Us in sixth. Clara Onathabel in seventh. Hannah Thomas in eighth. And Nadine Varachnik of Austria in ninth. So 11 boats down. 19 still to go, and they're the fastest 19 from the heats as uh, Lois Betridge comes into this tricky move upstream 21 on Niagara. Yeah, she'll just be seeing what kind of raw time she can put down now. Um, that's really great sportsmanship to see her continuing with the run and continuing to show the other girls what she can do. Um, I really like to see it when athletes finish the course, even after the 50-second penalty. So, next up, and the first of our Slovak competitors in this semi-final, it is Monica Skacheva, who was 16th last weekend in Lee Valley at the first World Cup race of the 2019 season. And she was the under-23 European champion last year, so oh, one to watch. That and was so tight through gate five. Um, Skacheva is really, really experienced on this course, though. Um, this generation of Slovak girls coming up is super strong and they have a really competitive training group. Um, it's super cool to see what they can throw down on these courses. You can see her deal with sliding out the eddy there really well, so I think while she's down on the split just now, she'll bring that back in the middle section. Yes, it's very recoverable, that. But uh, two-second penalty on the downstream gate five, and actually from where she was, that's probably uh, will be seen as uh, actually a great recovery. She's taken this on forwards, um, but you can see that she's paid the price a little bit for that. She's gone downstream through gate 12, so she's going to have to go back down and then get her nose back up again, which is difficult with the water is so powerful here. Yeah, the time slipping away there between 12 and 13. We'll get an indication of where she stacks up against our current race leader, Dobrok Vorska of the Ukraine, as she comes down. The next split is around about gate 17, so not long until we get that indication. Certainly not any more penalties added on to her time. So if she can deliver this move through 17. Uh, look at this. But look uh, at that. 10 seconds have slipped away and uh, more will get added on now. Yeah, I think a, definitely a pushback, a sort of skull pushback would be most effective on 17 to 18. I think if you can see it forwards when you get there, um, from if you have the movement already on your boat, people can just accept it and embrace the forwards movement. But I think actually the girls would really benefit from taking that sculling movement well into the upstream and again oh, really she goes in tight but uh, gets stuck on the eddy line the, where the fast water and the uh, stationary water is all a little bit confused yeah she perhaps knew already that her run was a little slow you can bring it back with really tight upstreams at the bottom though so i think perhaps maybe she just wanted to see how high she could get into that up and just take as much time as possible as she could well, unfortunately for Monica Skachova of the of Slovakia, it's not going to be today into ninth place, and we still have 
17 paddlers to go, I think, or 16, so it's not going to be a place in the final, unfortunately. But here, Monica Doria Villarubla, as we see on the screen, a uh, European champion from uh, 2017. Yeah, she's picked up two touches already, um, which isn't ideal, but again, we've seen some really rogue runs from the middle section to the bottom, so I think we'll see some really excellent paddling here. She's also been on the Spanish and British slots, so I've seen her paddling and she looks really composed on this kind of water. Well, she's uh, representing Andorra, and she was 29th at Lee Valley last weekend, which isn't really reflective of her performance. She picked up a 50-second penalty in the semi-final and uh, didn't progress through into the final, but she's certainly someone, look at that, 0.48, so despite really? those four seconds of penalties, she is in touch with the race lead, that race lead currently held by Dobrok Vorchka of the Ukraine, but another penalty picked up there, so, so no more margin for extra penalties. Oh, this is great, you just saw her go on the uh, left-hand paddle into the upstream there, which is a really scary move um, for K1 let alone a C1. Ah, she just fell really low in this eddy now. I think she'll struggle to make this time back up again. Um, super cool to see one of the first girls to approach that on the upstream blade, though. It was really fast. Um, I think the best girls will definitely do that on gate 20. Well, it's a good run. That's a good line to 23. A little bit sticky on just after in the eddy line. It is a good run, but it, is it going to be good enough as she goes into fourth place? Monica Doria, Villarubla of Andorra with a total time 123.96 so it's still Dobrot Vorska of the Ukraine leading ahead of Claire Jacquet of France Evie Liebfarth of the United States of America as we are now at the pretty much the halfway point in this the women's C1 semi-final oh, we just seen Katarina Havlitskova just uh, took that on forwards but you can see she's getting battered by the curl here that's not easy um, she's a Czech paddler, so she's very experienced on highly technical water moves. Um, you can see how changeable this curl is, though. I know there's some local upset on <laughs> which gates have been placed there, um, because the water can really, really change there. It's not easy to anticipate what's going to wow. happen. She's 11 seconds down the split. I think she may struggle to make this back up, but she's so experienced. I think there's definitely a chance. Well, that's, uh, that's harsh, really, because... Uh, you could see just how well she did that move, but then rejected on the run into uh, the upstream gate six yeah. and paid a big price, 11-second really... deficit for well an athlete who won a world title on this course back in 2011. Yeah, really brutal. She didn't get an easy flush there. Um, you know, everyone's under the same conditions. Uh, it, Bratislava isn't an easy course, and you can definitely get really unlucky with the water, but... Um, but, you know, she's experienced, she'll know how to cope with that and hopefully take off a lot of time on the last section. Well, let's watch as she switches there, preparing this move from uh, 17 to 18, but more time. She had made a bit of time up, but more time has slipped away on that move 17, uh -huh. as well as an additional penalty there, a two-second penalty for touching gate 18. Yeah. Um, I've been a little surprised to see nobody spin gate 17, but it's a very strong stopper there. Oh, you saw her just nail that on the left blade. Um, that is the best way to do it, for sure. You can see her getting her nose right down so that she can jump into the back of gate 22. And now we're going to see just how much time can be taken off in those two upstreams. She was 12 seconds down on the last split, after which she had a touch and also a massive paddle back. So we'll see how much time she's made back up again. That's got to be the, bo the best bottom section we've seen. Yeah, for but sure. Is it too a little too late? Katarina Havlicova <gasps> is. Oh, why? <laughs> that was poor form. You did not grab a gate. <laughs> well, Sonia Stanovsky is really experienced here. Um, I feel bad for her missing that move. Um, but we did not grab gates. Right. Well, let's let's have a look. It is Slovakia's Sona Stanovska leading away and she has picked up a 50 second penalty on that gate that downstream gate five and uh, yeah she obviously got it we didn't quite see how she got into trouble but yeah grabbing the gate is we, uh, uh, not gonna help no we saw her approach it on her right side i think on the curl move and she may have lost her edge to the left because it is a savage move uh, the water's really strong there and it's very difficult to stay balanced well sona clearly well she joined me yesterday in the commentary booth and was really looking forward to her run. It's not going how she would have liked at this stage in the run. She was 10th uh, last year. She made the Senior World Championship final. And, uh, well, she's uh, been a World Championship silver and bronze medalist at junior level. 
Yeah, it'd be really cool to see a masterclass in this bottom section because she is a very technical paddler. It'd be really cool to see her smash this and show some of the better girls how to do it. Well, disappointment there. So for Slovakia, the first two boats for Slovakia not looking like they're going to progress through oh, into the final. But yes, there we so go, Amber. Nice. That's how to do it. But just a little bit uh, gung-ho there. But a 50-second penalty awarded on 18. Uh, I think knocking the pole around her head with the front of her boat. Yeah. And it's not happening today for Sona Stanowska of Slovakia. It's not easy with a mistake that early on in the course. It's really difficult to cope with in your brain. Yeah, so it is. Victoria Dobrovskaya of Ukraine leading the way ahead of Claire Jacquet of France, Avi Leipfarth of the United States of America. Those are the top three at the moment as we are now past the halfway point in this semi-final. And of course, the athletes racing in reverse order of the heats. So in theory, the top paddlers still to come. And speaking of top paddlers, well, on course for Austria, it is the European champion from last year, Victoria Wolfhardt, 24-year-old, who's a very successful paddler. Yeah, Vicky's really experienced on difficult water. Again, she trains in Vienna, so she'll know what to do with this boily water, which changes a lot under the poles. She just got super nice into gate 12. You saw her let her nose go off the back of that wave and track it back up again so she wouldn't lose any speed into the upstream. Another super fast switcher. Well, Victoria would have been buoyed by Austria's performance, taking gold yesterday in the women's kayak with Karina uh, Kundler. And, uh, well, can Austria get another successful day here in Bratislava? And, uh, of course, I would assume that because Vienna's only an hour or so down the road, then they uh, get onto this course quite often. They do spend a lot of time here. She's just having to paddle back up for gate 18, but I don't think she'll actually lose too much time here if she can smash the last two up the stream. I will see Vicky taking it on the left blade, I think, for the last, uh, the second last up. We'll see her switch now. Yeah, she's coming to the edge of the drop. Make sure she pushes her boat nose down and really got nicely into the back of that. We'll see her lose her nose here now into the flow so that she can jump right over that eddy line. An amazing switch, a really late switch. That was so fast. And now she'll come out onto the curl and track her nose down for the last gate. Well, surely this is going to challenge the race lead. She did have that problem at 17 to 18, but Victoria Volfart of Austria is going to challenge the race lead and into the race lead. And surely that is going to challenge for a place in the final. So Victoria Volfart of Austria goes into the lead ahead of Victoria Dobrotvorska of the Ukraine. She and has, then Claire Jacquet of France in third place. Yeah, she has an asterisk on her name, which I think she's confused by. I didn't see her touch or miss anything, so I think she's fairly safe. We should see that disappear soon. Um, but that was a really nice run from Vicky. So uh, when we talk about an asterisk by the name, so the live results that we are looking at, then uh, to help us to know what's going on, as well as the athletes, if there's an asterisk going on, then... Uh, and here we actually see Sona Stanowska grab the pole, unfortunately. And that was her 50-second penalty. But I uh, believe we will just have to pause the race whilst that gate is reset. Yes, so, well, they fix the damage that she made to it when she grabbed it while she was falling over. Um, sometimes you can do desperate things in a race, um, but that's an illegal move. OK, well, we are, well, 17 boats down. The uh, leading race time, 118.54. What are your reflections now with just over halfway through the semi-final? What do you think it's going to take to get into the final? Oh, number? it's been action-packed so far. We're seeing some really nice paddling. Some uh, athletes are taking these moves on forwards and really nailing them as well. We saw Nadine Verasnik um, really aggressively attacking the top section. It was beautiful to watch. Some people are really nailing the bottom bridge move. Um, but we have seen that if you nail one section, uh, there's quite often a big mistake on another section. Um, and it doesn't mean that you'll lose too much time to be into the final. We saw Victoria Wolf have one paddle back and she's sitting in the lead just now. Um, so I think we'll definitely see a mix of much faster and much slower times. And I think perhaps Vicky will be right on the edge of making that final. OK, so we're 17 boats in and we have got a momentary pause whilst uh, gate five is reset. And, uh, well, yeah, the top three, as you said, Amber, there, the uh, time of Victoria Volfart does include a paddle back round. So we know there's still quite a lot of time in this course. And there we see the 
uh, ICF Jean-Michel Pono, the chairman of the ICF committee, just making sure that uh, the gate is reset at the right height to make it a fair competition for those still to come. Yeah, I wonder if perhaps Vicky will get a rerun because the pole is at an odd height after um, Stanowski. We'll have, to, well, we'll have to wait and see on that front. But uh, what we do know so far at the moment, uh, big surprises really. Uh, Nadine Varachnik of Austria, you would expect her to have been in contention for a place in the final and already sitting in 13th place outside of the final. And our two Slovak competitors down the course so far uh, outside of the top 10, so won't feature in the final. And to me, that's a big surprise on this uh, water that they're so familiar with. Yeah, I think it really shows the um, versatility of courses that the organisers can set on these kinds of courses. Um, so even the locals don't seem to have an advantage here because there's some really difficult moves that are slightly against what would normally be set for training. Um, but it does mean that everyone's on a level playing field, so we're seeing truly a masterclass in slalom here. Well, there's uh, Victoria Us uh, of the Ukraine there sitting, watching, so seeing whether she's done enough. Currently sitting in ninth place in the reckoning and, well, vulnerable. It would be a good description, I think. Yeah. Um, I think, so the asterisk has come off of Vicky Wolfart's name, which I think means that she may have decided not to do a second run. Um, she did have quite a good run. She did have a paddle back, so I think we will see some people go faster. Um, but she did perform some of the moves really well, so I think she's probably quite safe for the 118. I think the fastest we'll see in the Sea on Women today will be under 110. Well, right, there we go. We'll have to wait and see. Um, anyone who knows me and my commentary, then I'd normally be putting people, uh, well, speculating what the winning time will be. Yeah, I think uh, the British girls in Jess Fox will definitely challenge that lead. Um, we also have... Uh, some of the German paddlers are looking really strong this season. And of course, Anna Satilla qualified in first place on Friday, um, so she'll definitely put down a challenging time here. So if you've just joined us here, it's the women's C1 semi-finals here at the uh, ICF World Cup 2 here in Bratislava in Slovakia. And unfortunately, we've just got a temporary delay to uh, repair one of the gates, gate 5 which has uh, just been damaged by one of the competitors. As soon as we are back uh, with that gate in the right position, then we'll be back underway with racing. And, well, let's, you know, we've talked about who is leading, Victoria Volfart of Austria, but we've still got some big names to come in this semi-final. Yeah, so in the final 10 to come down, we had Beth Foro, who's an experienced, although very young paddler. Uh, she qualified in first for the World Championship final in Rio last year. So she's very experienced and knows how to lay down award-winning performances at a high level. We have Shi Chen from China. Uh, the Chinese C1 girls train here full-time with Matikan, um, so they get <laughs> extremely high level of guidance through this kind of course. Uh, Rihova from Czech Republic, another young paddler who is extremely competent on highly technical whitewater. The German girls, Andrea and Elena, um, again, they're all, it's such a high caliber of our final 10 paddlers. Um, Sophie Ogilvy has not missed a senior final yet this season. It's her first year on the senior team. Um, and she's been really putting down performances to solidify her place there. Ailey Gibson took a World Cup medal here a few years ago um, in Bratislava. Um, well, yeah, and Ailey was fourth at the World Championships in 2017. And then, of course, we've got the big name, Jessica Fox, who has pretty much won everything there is to win in this sport, uh, the world champion in, uh, for Australia. She goes off third from last, as well as Teresa Fisherova of the Czech Republic. And Anna Satila, who, uh, well, I always like watching Anna Satila paddle. She's... She, she's a real risk taker. When she gets yeah. it right, it's really exciting to watch, but sometimes it doesn't necessarily deliver. Yeah, she's so strong and she attacks moves with full confidence, which is what everyone would really love to do. And so often she really pulls it off. She's just standing there preparing, making sure that she's got everything exactly how detailed she needs it to be. Um, yeah, she attacks everything with confidence. Uh, that's Ava from the USA, who's had a great weekend. She should be really proud of her performances so far. She's also sitting in fourth, so she's probably waiting to see what happens to the rest of the girls. Um, we've seen a huge mix of extremely experienced paddlers making huge mistakes um, and having some real problems, um, and also some less experienced paddlers putting down runs they can be really proud of. 
Well, I think uh, Evie Liebvarth there from the United States of America, yeah, as you say, Amber, sitting in fourth place. I think she could be quite comfortable that she's going to be in or around that tenth place, whether it be the right side or the wrong side. Oh. I guess only time will tell. <laughs> There's nothing worse than 11th. <laughs> I think 12th is starting to be all right, and then, yeah, 11th's not easy, but I think... Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. It'll be really interesting. So the difficulty is actually for the paddler next to start. In fact, as we look there, there's Franz Anton. So uh, he yeah. was our gold medalist yesterday in the men's C1 event. And uh, while well, we know he's a keen photographer, and there you go, he is uh, uh -huh. just having a day off. And I believe Franz is actually going to join me in the uh, commentary booth for the finals this afternoon. So I'm really looking forward to that, getting yeah. a bit of insight from... Uh, from him. That'd be great, yeah. France has a really nice feeling for the water. Um, he's one of the most successful transfers from the C2 class. He's not happy with whatever picture he just took. He's just going to try again. He's lining up, making sure that he gets focused on the athletes. I thought <laughs> he might be taking a picture of the big screen. <laughs> but uh, the hardest thing, Amber, let's, let's just focus here. So they're still adjusting gate five. Then if you're the next person to start, you don't quite know how long you've got until the start. How do you cope with that in your head to make sure that you're ready when the starter says, hey, minute to go? I, it's never easy when there's a delay. You time your whole day to perfection to make sure that you're ready exactly when you need to be. Um, but the thing is, slalom's such a volatile sport. Um, we're having to deal... Um, we're having to deal with uh, changing conditions um, and really changing situations all the time. Um, so I think actually a five or ten minute delay is something that these paddlers will be completely ready to deal with. They'll be primed to expect this kind of delay. They'll have practiced it a million times. Um, we've all been there waiting at the top of the course for a coach to say, yes, let's go. <laughs> so I, I don't think they'll be too psyched out by it. But it's never easy when you have to wait for a little longer. Luckily, it's not too hot today, so I don't think they'll be overheating in the start pool. Yeah, that's very true. So uh, the competitors just waiting to see when we will restart the race. You could see there the um, course design team just making sure they're making sure that they're repositioning that gate. Such a critical gate, that, yeah. that move. And uh, it only takes it to be put back in slightly the wrong place and suddenly there's either an advantage yeah. or a disadvantage to those still to come. So yeah. they're just taking the time to make sure they put it in the right place. And it looks like they've now made a decision on that positioning yeah you have to adjust both poles independently of one another so it does take a little bit of time especially when it's been damaged um, it, that's also a really critical water move and the water does change there a lot um, so they're going to have to be remeasuring exactly how it flushes and make sure the gate's the right height at all times for the next few paddlers well, great to see the rain has stopped here in Bratislava because this morning we woke up to quite heavy rain still the temperature is very pleasant and the conditions, not a lot of wind, uh, but it is nice to uh, that the rain stops and that encourages the spectators to get engaged in this uh, great racing as we're into semi-finals and of course later on this morning, in fact uh, midday Central European time, we are scheduled to get underway with those finals. Yeah, they love slalom here in Slovakia, they really put on a show. Um, it's not easy to match up to an event like was held in London last weekend, um, but it's been a really great event and I think everyone's really enjoying it, all the spectators. So the World Cup series is a series of five races, so yeah, as you said Amber, we were in London, Lee Valley last weekend. Uh, we, we're in Bratislava here in Slovakia this weekend. Next weekend, so put that in your diary, we will be in Slovenia. So just outside Ljubljana at uh, Tartsen. A uh, great spectacular course there, uh, particularly the first few gates on the course, always one to watch. So join us on Planet Canoe next weekend for that again, streamed live. And then there's a bit of a break for the uh, summer whilst the junior and under 23 season sort of really kicks off and people start focusing in on the world championships at the end of august we go to markleberg just outside leipzig in germany and then to prague for the world cup final and that world cup final carries double points yeah that's a really important race for the final world cup rankings and um, the Prague is always an amazing event to go to. Um, so many paddlers who don't get to race it actually go to watch anyway because it's such a cool event. You get to see the best paddlers in the world throw down some amazing moves. Um, if you love slalom, if you love water, that's definitely an awesome event to go to. It's so cool. Yeah, Prague will also be hosting the Extreme Slalom World Championships this year. Uh, we will have Extreme Slalom in action this afternoon in Bratislava. 
here at the World Cup, and that gets underway at 3 o'clock Central European time this afternoon. So join us for Extreme Slalom. Head-to-head -head racing, four boats, and uh, Amber, how much Extreme Racing have you done? I've not done any of the Extreme Slalom. Um, the ramps really intimidate me. Um, I like my finger bones, but <laughs> I don't want to break them. There's uh, some amazing girls do this kind of racing as well. They're so brave um, and super fast as well. We actually have a reigning World Cup winner at the moment. Etienne Chappell is going to be racing later on. Um, he took the win in London over some very experienced extreme racing paddlers. So uh, they'll use this ramp, the white section in between the Pepsi signs. Um, and I think we'll definitely see something really exciting go down later because especially with the bottom drop, four paddlers at a time, it's going to be extremely yeah, exciting. Yeah, head racing, dog eat dog, as it says. We've got the women's extreme canoe slalom, the men's extreme canoe slalom. And that's, as I say, 3 o'clock Central European time this afternoon, we have that competition. But it looks like we're nearly ready to start. Yep. Certainly the, the course design team have stepped away from adjusting the gate. Yeah, in three minutes we'll restart. Um, there's some great paddlers watching just now. A shout out to Kimberly Woods. He's watching on the live stream. <laughs> She's just asked us to say so, hello. Kimberly Woods, of course, uh, took a silver medal in this event last weekend at uh, the Lee Valley World Cup and fourth in the uh, women's kayak event as well. So a good start her season. And a lot of the, the British team are taking a, a, a down week after last weekend because it was it was quite significant as part of the British team Olympic selection. Yeah, we had a, a f almost a full house last weekend. We took up so many medals. Um, the British team really showed everyone like how fast they can be on courses like London um, and in the world. So they're definitely taking a well and break this weekend and next weekend. But it's not, not just the British paddlers that were picking and choosing. There's quite a few other paddlers will be picking and choosing their racing this year, partly because of their own country's selection process for the Olympic Games, but partly prioritizing their preparation for the World Championships. And those World Championships will get underway in the end of September at La Seo d'Urgel in Spain in the foothills of the Pyrenees, the venue from the 1992 Olympic Games. And, uh, well, over 25 years on, it's still a really fantastic venue. Yeah, I've still never been to Seo. That's that's the last course on my list of um, world-class venues that I've not been to. Um, yeah, there's a lot of nations using Seo, uh, the World Championships, as their final selection series for Tokyo 2020. Um, it's really interesting to see the structure a lot of nations are using. Um, I think based on British success in the last couple of Olympics, there's a lot of nations basing their structure off ours. Um, so it's great to see that all the same athletes are having to perform at the best of their ability at all the same events. So we're seeing a whole new level of slalom. It's completely changed in the last four years, and it's really great to see. Well, we'll be underway with the uh, racing again very shortly. In this, it's the women's C1. It's semi-finals time. Just to recap, we're 30 boats racing in this semi-final, and the fastest 10 boats will go through to the final, which is due to start at 12 o'clock Central European time. And, well, at the moment, the race lead held by Victoria Volfart of Austria, ahead of Victoria Dobrik's Vorska of Ukraine, and Claire Jacquet of France. There we are on the graphic. That is the top three at the moment. 118.54 is the fastest time. And we have had 17 finishers in this competition. So by my maths, that means 13 still to go. <laughs> I think so. Um, we've got uh, Eva Hodzeva coming next. Um, she's a really young paddler, but the Slovenian guys are super smooth on the water. They're so good at using the flow for all their moves. Super tight to gate to there. Um, but I think we'll see a masterclass in curl moves on the next couple of gates. I hope I haven't just ruined this. Well, let's have a watch as uh, yes. Eva Hodzeva switches around for, well, it doesn't go quite the plan, but she's still very much in control and keeping it penalty free at this stage of the course. Yeah, it looks like she's preparing to go forwards there, um, but the curl caught her nose, but she dealt with that so calmly. I think she's going clean through this next section, seeing she's um, two seconds down on the split, but we have seen how much time can be taken off the last section. Um, well, she was uh, fourth at the Junior World Championships last year, and uh, well, anyone who's uh, been around slalom for a while, probably including me, uh, uh, would remember Simon Hochevar, who was uh, a bit of a legend in the uh, Slovenian team for a number of years in slalom and river racing. So coming from a, uh, well, a pedigree, 
Yeah, we saw Katarina Havlitova. Um, she was 12 seconds down on this next split and made up four seconds at the bottom. So we're going to see something really exciting and special here, I think. Uh, any athlete who trains on Tassin full time uh, is bound to be awesome at water moves. Uh, there's nowhere to hide on Tassin. Um, you have to be great at using the water. And see, she's using the curl here to like whip her nose back around and she's going to really fight for gate 18. She's come through there. It's okay. She's recovering in the flow. So her boat's not stopped moving downstream at any point. Well, she's 6.5. 41 seconds down, but don't forget Victoria Volfart, who is our race leader, had a recirculation. So, in theory, she's actually closed that gap if she can deliver the bottom section. Well, she delivers 21. Yeah, she's really nailing this. She came on the upstream blade and she's doing it again for gate 22. I think we're going to look at a really fast time here. Right. I think we may see under 120 seconds making it through to the final for all the girls. I think we will be looking maybe at a new release leader. Let's go. I think we're going to be outside of that time, but a great <laughs> performance there. Into second place for Ava <laughs> Alina Hotchevar. In fact, it's a it's a draw. So it's a second equal at the moment with Victoria Dobrik Vorska of Ukraine. So next up, the third Slovakian in this competition. Yeah, she's a local here, Emanuela. Um, is just using that eddy on the right-hand side to set up for this curl move. You can see her keeping it right down and making sure that she's tracking to the back of the upstream. So it's Emanuela Luknarova of Slovakia now with the hopes resting on the shoulders of this Slovakian coming through gate nine now has picked up a two second penalty on gate seven yeah we've seen a few people touching gate 10 and um, it's really close to the right hand wall and it's a really boily bit of water and um, so we have seen a few people taking that touch on their boot or on their body and um, she's dealing with this middle section really well this is definitely an experience move because you cannot let your boot give in to the impulse to put your tail down here you have to stay really flat but she's dealing with this like a local taking a little touch there on her buoyancy aid well looking smooth looking composed but uh, she is down on the split victoria volfart of austria still leading so she's seven seconds down but we did see that from uh, oh. hotcheval that you can make that up but you can't do that if you're just going round in circles on the stopper here by gate 17. Yeah, this is a really brutal stopper. It's really hard to like get your nose down and stay in control of it. She's just really nailed this stagger though, so I think actually if she can hold it together, she has another 15 seconds to play with, which is hard for two upstreams, but she's coming into this on the upstream blade and oh. sliding really low in the eddy. It's all over now, unfortunately, for looking her over. It's damage limitation as uh, Emanuela looking her over comes into the upstream 22 again a little bit low there and outside of the time I think it's going to be required to uh, get into the final so disappointment for Slovakian fans at this stage in the competition yeah. they've still got to uh, Obviously, the men's K1 semi-final to come up next, but into 12th place for Emanuela Luknarova of Slovakia. Oh. And a big surprise there, no Slovaks will be in the final. Yeah, Lucy Bodo just took on this move forward and she smashed it. That was awesome. So we'll just see her trying to keep her nose really light here. Ah, oh, I'm just getting caught up in the eddy on the right-hand side. We'll just see her trying to keep balanced and composed for the rest of the run. Four seconds down, but that's with four seconds of penalties as well. So we'll see what kind of speed she can put down in the middle section. So Lucy Bordeaux was fourth last weekend in Lee Valley, just outside the medals on the first World Cup of the season and fifth at the European Championship. So she's had a really strong start to the 2019 season. But uh, now needing to recompose, as you say, Amber, because four seconds of penalty showing and the clock is ticking. She's yeah. deep. She's oh. low on 13. And it's very wide on gate 13. There's a lot of flow going through there that can push you around to the back near the grandstand. Um, so you have to make sure that you get plenty of speed out the gate. That was really nicely through gate 14, and we'll see her just setting up to use this curl move. She's a pole local, um, so she'll be familiar with difficult moves at the end of the course. That was beautiful through gate 17. She just took a little touch, ah, and again. Um, so we'll just see what happens for the so next part. But nearly 10 seconds down on that second split and an additional penalty to add to that so lucy bordeaux of france on her back foot here oh. 
Now can she keep the bowels up to get tight into 22? Well, she takes that tight exit from 21, but pays the price as uh, she doesn't get tight into 22. Yeah. It's not a bad time, but Lucy Bodu of France is up against it to make it into the final. Yeah, and she's having to spin around in the eddy here. This is such a difficult finish because the gate's half in the slow-moving water and half in the fast-moving water. So when you're finishing coming from the right-hand side in the last up, um, it's really hard to keep your nose down. Well, into 10th place for Lucy Bodu, and with the calibre of athletes still to come down, unlikely to progress into the final. Yeah, and we have Beth Borrow on course now, a London local, so she's super experienced on big water. She knows exactly what to do, and it's a uh, lightning-fast split there. We'll see her take some time off the split, even with a two-second penalty. Ah, another one. She's having to spin in the eddy, but she'll keep really composed through this section. So Beth Borrow was a finalist at the World Championships in Rio de Janeiro last year. In fact, she was the fastest in the semi-final. I think surprised quite a lot of people. Finished eighth in the final and took her team gold in the uh, team event. She didn't make the team this, this season, did she? As such is the uh, level of performance required to make it into the top three. Yeah, I mean, uh, C1 women are the best in the world. It's one of the hardest categories to make the senior team in now because uh, everybody has medals, you know. Like, we're so well decorated in this field. Um, she's really coping with those touches very well at the moment, staying really composed, making sure she comes under that right-hand pull, setting up for this curl move here. If anyone can deal with this, it'll definitely be best. She's a little down on the split, but I think she can recover it in the last two moves see her using that draw stroke like we saw some of the other girls using through the stagger super smooth making sure that she's really nice and composed on the left hand blade into the drop move well another penalty picked up though so 11 seconds was the deficit and uh, growing there she's a little bit low at 21 yeah she's low here but we'll see her taking a high exit so that she can get her nose down into the last upstream super fast switch with eight seconds of penalties i think she may struggle to make the final but this is still a very good time well, Beth Borrow of Great Britain now paddling towards the finish. Is it going to be enough? No, it, it's not, unfortunately, today. And out at the semi-final stage, well, provisionally into ninth place. So still holding on with the hope, but still some big names to come. I think still nine boats to come in this semi-final. Oh, she had someone shout at her on the start line. I'm not sure what happened there, but she had someone speaking to her. That's not easy after such a big break, and wow. she would have been having to prepare. I wonder what happened, and maybe she'd get a rerun? Or... Well, I don't know. We wouldn't speculate if it was just an external thing that distracted her. That's her problem, unfortunately. But yeah. speaking of problems, it looks like Chen Shi of the People's Republic of China has taken a 50-second penalty oh. early on on the run. Oh, that's so brutal. She touched the gate so hard that it swung the wrong side of her head. Um, that's really difficult to deal with early in the run. She may not know she has it, but, or she may be just seeing how fast she can go down the course now. And it's been converted to a two-second penalty. So it's really good that she dealt with that and just carried on as fast as she could. So the uh, People's Republic of China, very much, uh, they pick and choose their races, and, but when they come, they uh, very much come focused and uh, are really emerging as a nation, particularly in this Women's C1 event. Yeah, they have a really great female coach, um, so they're sort of <laughs> leading the race in high-performance female coaching, I guess. Um, yeah, the Chinese girls train so hard. Um, they get a lot of help from other nations as well. Um, when they're learning on really course-specific races. Well, she was 11th at uh, Lee Valley last weekend, so just missed out by fractions on a place in the final. 19th at the World Championships last year, and it says it is a very quick time if you take into account those penalties, but uh, another penalty picked up, and uh, the time slipping away, but surely this is actually probably the fastest raw time of the day. Yeah, this is looking like a really fast time. I think the fastest raw time we've had so far has been a 1.17. Um, so, Shi Chen of the People's Republic of China. She went in with a 1.17 as well, yeah. I think around 1.17 is going to be some of the faster run times we see. I think there's definitely scope for about five seconds to be taken off Wiki Wheel Parts time. She did have a paddle back. Um, 
You can see uh, she's taking this on as a spin, but that was actually really fast. She used that right hand eddy to kick her nose around. See her getting an unlucky flush in the curl move there. She's having to drag the nose down to get in behind the upstream at gate six. Well, we saw that a bit with uh, Katarina Havnikova, who d delivered the move four five really nicely, but then didn't quite get into six. Yeah, it's brutal. So Eva Riova now of the Czech Republic. She's actually only five seconds down, which is kind of surprising because she did get stuck there for quite a while. Um, but, you know, she'll stay really composed. Uh, the Czech paddlers is great at dealing with difficult waters, so we'll just watch her hopefully smash the bottom section. Well, we can wait and see, but she certainly looks like she's composed. She's uh, put those uh, little time errors behind her on the top part of the course. But uh, we are starting to tighten up. Let's have a look at the leaderboard because it is Victoria, Victoria Wolfhart of Austria leading 118.54. That's the lead time. But uh, as we know, there is some time in there to be had. The door is wide open at the moment. Tenth place is 129.83. But I would be um, looking to speculate it'd be around about 122 seconds, some, somewhere along those lines. Oh, so she's taking this on forwards, even though she's really late. She's just getting her head through the downstreams, coming into this Niagara move on her left blade, uh, just clipping the pole with her bow. But still, not not too far behind the gate. She's not as tight as she'd have liked to be, but I think she's coming a little wide into this upstream and getting pushed back by the curl on the right-hand side. Yeah. Still looking at a really competitive time, though. Well, it does. She's now got to get this line through 23 smooth and clean. She does that as she comes towards the finish. It's a good time, and it's going to be on the margin of a place in the final. But ticking wow. away and only into seventh place for the Czech Republic, Eva Rehova goes into seventh place and uh, well we can <laughs> confirm that Victoria Wolfhart, Victoria Dobrot Vorska and Eva Alina Hotcheva are our first qualifiers Andre in this semi-final. Andrea Herzog touched the first gate but she's just smashed this move in the middle like gone clean through all the really difficult gates here so she'll be really composed she's a second and a half off on the split with a two second penalty as well. Yeah, so She'd be my top tip for today, actually. So is always super composed. And, uh, well, she's a double junior world champion. And uh, watching her at Lee Valley last uh, weekend, she really looks like she's developed over the winter and yeah. has come back really strong. Yeah, they had a disadvantage in Augsburg over the winter because they closed the course and they were cleaning it. So they spent a lot of time in Prague um, and I think some time in Bratislava as well. So the German team should be quite familiar here. We did see Franz Anton take the gold yesterday. Um, yeah, it's super nice to see paddlers completely developing themselves over the winter. It just gives you so much inspiration as a racer as well. She's lost a little time in the middle section, but she has taken on another four seconds of penalties. So she is actually speeding up. You just don't see it reflected in her finishing time. Well, fifth last weekend in Lee Valley, and the job on this run is to get into the final, get into that top ten, and she is on track for that. She's come quite low in the eddy before gate 21. I think we'll see her take the right hand line over the curl, jump into the back of gate 22 and she's clipped it again so with 8 seconds of penalty she's actually got a super fast time, if she can keep it tracking through here I think she still may have a time. Uh, she may even take the race lead if she could really <laughs> do that, this is a supreme run and into oh. first place, Andrea <laughs> Herzog of Germany goes into the final and yes look at that, that's under 110 seconds that was 109.13 plus eight seconds in penalties. Yeah. That's the kind of time we're looking at. And if anyone can challenge that, Elena Appel from Germany, they're um, uh, training group together, um, so they'll be super competitive. They're very good with the water. Elena's also made senior K1 team this year, so she's been having a great season so far. Just oh, dragged that around on the crossbow. That didn't look easy, but she's coming round on that curl, making sure that she tracks into the back of the up. You can see her having some difficulties like some of the other girls were having earlier on going into gate six, but now she's taking that speed out and attacking the next two gates. Oh, no. Well, that seems to cause quite a few problems at gate seven, and it looks like she's picked up a two-second penalty as well. But uh, look at that, 7.74. So just those little errors have really added up to being a big deficit for Elena Apple. Only 21st last weekend at the Lee Valley World Cup race, the opening World Cup of this ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup season. Yeah, Brighton's Live is such a bizarre course, especially the way the gates have been set, because we're seeing... Um, only two seconds so far between first and fourth place qualifying, uh, which is pretty tight margins for C1 women. Um, 
but also we're seeing some tiny mistakes costing a lot, even though there are some really drastic things going on in each run, so well, it's a little bizarre. But Unfortunately there, that means a 50-second penalty on gate 13 and gate 14 for Elena Apple of Germany, and uh, Elena's misfortune is... Um, the, is going to benefit Claire Jacquet of France because that means that Claire Jacquet will be our next qualifier. So, Andrea Herzog leads for Germany ahead of Victoria Wolfhart of Austria, Victoria Dobrok Vorska of the Ukraine, Eva Hotcheva for Slovenia, and Claire Jacquet of France will be the first five qualifiers, but we still have five boats to go in this women's C1 semi-final here in Bratislava. Next up, Sophie Ogilvy for Great Britain, who has had a great start to her 2019 season. She finished ninth at the European Championships. And, and uh, then, eighth. then eighth last weekend in Lee Valley, and uh, arguably an outstanding performance in the semi-final at Lee Valley. Yeah, Sophie's from my home club in Scotland. Um, I'm so proud to see her on this circuit this year. It's awesome to see her racing at the highest level. Uh, she's really coping with that difficult move. Did you see that switch? <laughs> she just spun it around her head, um, taking it really easy into this next section, just staying super smooth. See her losing her nose a little bit there. It's getting really heavy in this water. She's only four seconds down on the split, and just now it's four seconds between first and the last last qualifying place. Well, let's see how Sophie does as she comes opposite the grandstand here in Bratislava into gate 11. This is the critical move. You have to ride the wave and get, get a good nose. spin and keep your nose high to pick the wave up to be tight into 13. And Sophie does that very nicely indeed. Yeah, she's show showcasing these uh, switch moves. Um, Sophie's great on big water. She trains every day on Lee Valley. Um, so she's really experienced at these kinds of difficult curl moves. I think we're going to see her take some time off this next split, perhaps. Well, um, let's, let's see her set up because 16, 17. This is the critical move using the white water. She does that very nicely, oh, but she's going to have to work hard to get back yes, for 18. she's through for 18. She's taken a little touch on her shoulder there, but I think she'll be all right. If she can hold the next two upstreams together, it'll be great. Um, well, Sophie now has to get tight into 21. She is low, and uh, she's digging into the reserves there, digging deep. And now she needs to get across. She's tight into the yes, upstream 22. That's perfect. Good. Oh, she's just switched right before the edge line. It was great. She just needs to keep her nose down for this final sprint now. It's going to be really tight. Well, let's watch. Sophie Ogilvy for Great Britain go, is go. challenging for a place in the final and goes into yes. this place <laughs> and into the final. Well done, Sophie. And it sounds like, Amber, you're pretty pleased for your club mate, understandably. <laughs> and it's Ailey next. I can't deal with this. There's Ailey coming next, who's also from my home course in Scotland. Um, Ailey's a super experienced paddler. She's had such a tough two years with brutal injury, uh, but she's come back like a boss. She's going to smash this curl move. Well, taking it on the spin, going to come off that right-hand curl right into the back of the up. This is so smooth. Look at how smooth they well, let's watch Amy Gibson for Great Britain coming down the course. She was fourth at the 2017 World Championships. She had lots of injury problems since then. She had and a spin let's gate just, step. Let's just watch her now. So six seconds down on the top section. And Ailey has been, uh, in fact, Planet Canoe this week featured her on social media around uh, some of the work she's been doing around inspiring women to take up canoeing, and in particular, canoe slalom. So if you haven't heard about Slalom Inspires, then, uh, well, Ailey Gibson is the brains behind that, as she's putting a good run together in uh, Gate 13. Yeah, it's, uh, this initiative, Slalom Inspires, is to encourage women to stay in sport. So we see a lot of women entering sport at a lower level um, and then through the professional levels end up leaving a little early because of social pressure and different kinds of political sporting pressure. We'll see Ailey deal with this curl move here. She's taken so much time off her last split, she's just going to fight for Gate 18. She's going to have to come around the side of it. We did see Vicky Wolfart have to do this as well, so so I think if she can stay composed through here, she's still a really good amount up on the split. You're right, uh, Ailey Gibson. Look, look at that. She had a big mistake, but she's kept her composure as she comes down. This is the critical move, but she's still on track at the moment yeah. to make it into the final. Nicely into the back of the eddy there. She wants to take some speed out and make sure that she gets to the right-hand side of this curl. Perfect. Nice switch before there. Really tight into the back of gate 22, and she needs to get her nose down for this last gate and make sure she keeps it tracking. Well, let's watch. Ailey Gibson of yes. Great Britain now go, through go, go. gate 23, now paddling for a place in the final, Keep and going. surely that go. is enough. And into fifth place. <laughs> so she's qualified. Uh, and she is into the final. Ailey Gibson of Great Britain 
joins Sophie Ogilvie and uh, Claire Jacquet. So at the moment it is Evie Leapfoff from the United States of America, the 15-year-old, waiting to see if she has done enough as Jessica oh. Fox of Australia in all sorts of problems, but she'll recover that. She'll get back across for Kate Six, but... Uh, well, Jessica Fox of Australia, oh. the world champion, the World Cup winner, was uh, had such a dominant season in 2018. I think she doesn't have it all her own way at the top. Yeah, Jess nearly had a full house of gold medals last year. Um, amazing to watch. She's such a good sportswoman. Uh, really inspiring for all all athletes in the world. She's the most decorated slalom paddler in history. Um, it's really kind of humbling to see how well she deals with these mistakes though you know you kind of expect someone uh, like her occasionally to you know see that perhaps the time's slipping away from her and let it go to her head but she deals with it so well she's still in touch well i would even speculate to say that she had a 4.4 second deficit i would speculate that at the split she will be up because yeah. she is looking so controlled. And oh, she is 2.6 seconds. She has just picked up the two-second penalty, and she's oh. working hard. And she's having to paddle back for gate 18. Again, we've seen some of the best paddlers in the world have to paddle back for gate 18 anyway. Um, I think she'll cope with this really well. She's nearly three seconds up on the split. We're going to see her showing a masterclass in the bottom drop, I think. Well, let's wait and see, because she's still on track for a place. That's all that matters. She has to get into the top 10. Yeah. She has picked up another two-second penalty, but really quick through 20. Yeah, see her shoving her nose down there to get into the back of gate 22. She just needs to. Keep and another it tracking. penalty. Another penalty. Just rushing the exit of 22. And the time is slipping away. Jessica Fox is up against it. Will she do enough to make it through into the final? Oh. And into 10th place for Jessica Fox of Australia. And we still have two competitors to go. And wow, that would be a surprise if Jessica Fox doesn't make it through into the final. Next up, Teresa Fischerova of the Czech Republic. So another fearsome competitor, really experienced. She was sixth last weekend in Lee Valley, fourth at the Europeans earlier on this year. Well, she's got a big track record. Bronze last year at the World Championships, and she is a junior world champion in 2016. So already, though, six seconds in penalties on the top seven gates added to her time. So Fischerova of the Czech Republic now needing to do something like Jess did in the middle section to really find the rhythm and find the flow. Well, I'm still reflecting on that run from Jessica Fox oh, because that was... that was outstanding in the middle section. Yeah, she really brought it back. She was having some real difficulties. You saw her hit the wall on both gates in four, five, and six. Um, so that's not easy to deal with at all, but she really held it together like a true sportswoman. Uh, we may still see her in the final. Well, um, Teresa Fisher oh, over. Oh, she missed her cross. She missed the switch. Well, so you see that they switch paddle really, really fast from one side of the boat to the other, um, and we saw her miss the tee piece of her paddle so that she had to uh, hang on, and now she's having some trouble with this stopper. See her switch again. She's coping with this, really doing some difficult paddling here, but under the highest pressure. Um, well, she was uh, just in touch, actually, with our race leader. She was just a second down for race leader, but now it's all on the back foot. And Fisherova oh. needs something special here that if she's going to get into the final. And I suspect that, uh, well, it will be not enough. And especially with that touch, that she's going to be outside. Unfortunately, we're not going to see Teresa Fisherova of the Czech Republic progress into the final. But bad news for her is good news for Evie Liebfarth and now Monica Duria Villarubla of, Anna, of Andorra. So one to go. And it is Jessica Fox, the world champion, effectively against Ana Shatila of Brazil, the fastest boat in the heat on Friday. Yeah, we saw Jess have a super hard run. Um, she just caught the flow a little too wide on this section. Ana Shatila is absolutely flying through it. Well, this is a stunning performance on the top section from Ana Shatila of Brazil. She's 2.6 seconds up. Now, she needs to go in effectively a time of under 123.96 is the, the time to beat to get into the final. And at the moment, she is looking very strong indeed and looks like she's got time in hand. Yeah, she's flying through this section, looking really composed, super fast. She's coming a little low into gate 13, uh, but I think we'll see her setting up 
quite slowly for the next section. We're seeing people take a little too much speed through the curl move under the bridge, uh, and I think we'll see some people, in, especially in the men's as well, um, easing off the speed here to use the curl. See well, her let's see. Up. Yeah, let's see her on, on seven. 17. It, she is and seven she's... seconds up, but she's almost gone too cautiously on 17. No, I think perhaps she planned to spin there. Um, I was quite surprised nobody else tried that, because uh, it is a vicious stopper. It's hard, but you see her taking this next bit on forwards, and that's ended up being a really fast option. Uh, she's taking this on the left blade, still coming pretty low in the eddy, but she was nearly eight seconds up on the split, so I think she's pretty safe. Uh, just taking her... Oh, such a fast switch there. You saw her miss the T-piece. Wow, Anna Shatila is, uh, was definitely in the final as she approached 22. Now she's a bit on her back foot, but this is still going to be enough to make it through into the oh. final. But uh, ooh, she is clattering the poles on the bottom section. She's making it hard for herself. But Anna Shatila into fifth place and into the final. And, uh, well, that means big, big drama here in Bratislava because Jessica Fox of Australia is out of the final. Yeah, that's super high for Jess. Um... And... And... On course now, there was a rerun for Great Britain's Bethan Forro, so final uh, person down the course, but it would appear she's missed gate five. Yeah, I and think. And so, uh, unfortunately for Bethan Forro, then uh, that will be. Well, she won't stand a chance of making it into the final. This is super hard. Um, it's never easy having a rerun because you're having to analyse what you did in your last run very quickly to go again at the end of the category. Um, yeah, this is a really tough day for Beth because I don't know what happened at the start there. There were some problems, though, and for her to have a rerun means that it probably wasn't anything to do with her. It was just some um, organisation problem. Yeah, well, she looks like she's uh, recomposed herself and uh, is now heading down the course, but uh, yeah, it won't be enough. So let's just take the opportunity to have a look and reflect on that, this semi-final. 30 boats, we're down. We now know our 10 qualifiers, and... Well, Andrea Herzog will go off last for Germany, who uh, put in that uh, really strong time. Under 110 seconds, as we said it would take, but uh, eight seconds in penalties. So we know yeah. it's wide open in that final. Yeah, that's crazy. Doing um, a <laughs> qualifying in first place with eight seconds in penalties just shows you that every single girl who paddled in semifinals had it one significant mistake or one significant time loss. Um, so I think perhaps people are testing the water, seeing exactly where they want to be placed for the final, and then they'll really bring their A-game to the final. So there is the provisional results from the women's canoe semi-final. The top ten qualifying through into the final. That gets underway at midday Central European time, and they go in reverse order. And there's the big name, Jessica Fox of Australia, not making it through. Other big names, well, you could say that uh, Lucy Bordeaux, was expected for France to be in the final. There, Beth and Foro uh, provisionally not into the final. But uh, we'll see those athletes racing, and it's going to be an exciting final later on today because uh, we know that there's a time under 110 seconds uh, up for grabs, and if someone can get that uh, really clean, fast run, then they'll be hard to beat. Yeah, I think... Um this will be like much less a matter of physicality and much more a matter of who can use the water the most effectively. Um, so it'll be super exciting to watch. Well, this is the women's C1 semi-finals here in Bratislava in Slovakia. It's the second race of the World Cup season. And uh, very shortly up next, we'll be on with the men's K1, the men's kayak event. So we've been watching the women's canoe. The canoe is where they're kneeling in the boat with a single-bladed paddle. And then we'll get to the men's kayak, the kayak where the paddlers are sitting in the boat with their legs out in front of them with a double-bladed paddle. Women's C1 event has uh, certainly given us a lot of uh, anticipation for this afternoon's final. And uh, some big names there. Victoria Volfart of Austria actually in shot at the moment. Certainly uh, 
know that there's some time in the bank for her because she had a big paddle back but still progresses through into the final in second place. But let's turn our attention now to the men's kayak. It's men's K1 semi-final time. The top 40 boats from the heats on Friday have qualified through in reverse order. They race in this semi-final. 40 boats, though, have to be narrowed down in this semi-final into just the top 10 that will progress through to the final. Got some big names racing in this race. So Joe Clark, the Olympic champion from Great Britain and winner of the first World Cup race, not racing here in uh, Bratislava, but we've got big names like the likes of Peter Kauza, Yuri Priskovic, of course, who took silver last weekend in Lee Valley. Lee Valley. Hannes Eigner as well for Germany, who took the bronze last weekend in Lee Valley. They'll be racing off. But to start with, first up and 40th in the heats on Friday, it is Frederick Wallen of Sweden. So as an indication, in terms of uh, this men's kayak time, in order to get into that top 10, I would be anticipating that a time sub 90 seconds would be around about what is required to get into the final. Already, Frederick Wallen of uh, Sweden certainly waving his head around the uh, downstream gate five and cutting the lines fine. And that's often what you'll see within the men's kayak event. Then a lot more risk taking in order to find the time that is required to get into those margins. Myself, Andy Maddock, is uh, here. We'll bring you the uh, action as it unfolds. Alongside me, Amber Maslin from the British team. And a 50-second penalty showing for Frederick Marlin of Sweden. Oh, it's hard um, being the first off in the semi-finals. That's not easy. Um especially on this course. Frederick's a Swedish paddler who trains on the flat water most of the year. Um, I believe he works in Stockholm and they don't have access to any huge white water in Sweden. They do have a white water park that's only opened um, in the last year called Falun. Um, but it is nice to see Frederick in the semi-final. He's not having an easy run just now, though. We've seen some difficulties in the CO1 women's semi-final, so it's interesting to see what the men are going to do. Well, it is really great to see um, Swedish paddlers in this uh, in this event because uh, you know Sweden definitely had a uh, used to host in fact, host a number of World Cup races for the ICF, oh. but it's not happening today for Frederick as he uh, paddles out the final gate and just not finding the right side of the uh, the judges really and yeah. uh, a disappointing a start a little for his semi-final yeah a little too tight a little too loose and um, yeah not an easy run well next up for hungary it is marcel potocni and let's uh, have a look well already an early touch number one the gate one it looks pretty innocuous there yeah. but uh, a lot of people have been taking touches yeah um oh, he just had a tail touch on gate uh, four which is brutal you can't really do anything about the tail touch yeah and um, gate one two is a little harder than on the heat course on friday i think they've moved gate two a little to the right um, so we can see he's 97 seconds up on the split, which means at this point Frederick had already taken two 50-second penalties. Yeah, so uh, we can ignore the split really for now because the penalty's mounting up as well for Potocny of Hungary. So now showing six seconds in penalties. And I'm going to reiterate what I said really earlier on. Now, in Canoe Slalom, and particularly on this, the way the course, the gates have been set, no one's going to win this race on the top section, but they are going to lose it. Totally. And um, it's brutal for the K1 men because they know they're going to have to go and do something very special to be in the final. But I think actually as well, it's going to be a matter of who can stay the most composed um, because a lot of penalties are going to rack up in the semi-final, I think. Um, I don't know if there'll be any clean runs. Uh, maybe one or two from paddles we can expect. He's just gone the wrong way through gate 21, and he's just carrying on. Well, I think uh, it looks like uh, yeah, a tw gate 21, a 50-second penalty for Marcel Potocny of Hungary, not able to uh, get his head in the right direction through the gate. Of course, if the green and white gates need to be negotiated in a downstream direction, the red and white gates in an upstream direction, and yeah. you see a whole head that needs to go into the gate. Otherwise, a 50-second penalty. And, well, once you get into semi-final time, then there's no margin for error. Yeah. So first up for Great Britain, I think the sole representative for Great Britain 
Oh, no, there's two for Great Britain yeah, in this have... semi-final. Etienne Chapel, who actually won the extreme slalom event last weekend in Lee Valley. Yeah, Etienne's a really dynamic paddler. Um, him and Kieran Lee Edwards are both paddling in this semi-final. They're both from Wales. Um, it's super cool to see a home nation in the final over such a difficult World Cup. Etienne has a really good feel for the water. We see him quite often doing some really spectacular movements on London. Well, it's um, a good start on this top section yeah. because he's kept it clean. And, uh, well, yeah, it's a great start there. Four and a bit seconds up. The split doesn't really mean anything at this stage, but this is Etienne's opportunity to uh, put the pressure on those still to come. Yeah, he's choosing to spin here in 11, um, which gives him a little nice track onto there. And he's going forwards in gate 12. He just absolutely nailed that. Um, it's giving him a really nice entry onto the wave. It means he's flying into gate 13. I think we can ignore the penalties just for now because I think there will be very few clean runs in the men's. Uh, he's taking really tight line there and he had to put his tail right down so you saw it hit the bottom of the course and slow him down a little bit. I'm um, going to disagree with you there Amber, I think the penalties will be significant in the reckoning but uh, Etienne Chapel is putting a good run together Yeah. and now he's got to deliver this 21-22, the double upstream sequence on Niagara here we go, 21, yeah. he buries oh, it but uh, touch the gate as he's, well. he's tight but yeah, it looks like a penalty picked up there, now confirmed, 22 Again, he's got the line. Can he get the exit? He does. Yeah, he's uh, flying through these last few gates. That's a, a really spectacular run. Um, perhaps not as fast as Etty's capable of putting down. Um, so he did go under 100. <laughs> I well, think he's a little confused as to why he's 200 seconds off on the split. Well, let, let's um, uh, reflect on that. He had under 100 seconds, and let's just remember, he's still a junior. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, he, had, he had, didn't have it his own way, getting into the junior team at selection earlier on this year. So uh, he is uh, yeah, in the race lead at the moment, 98.51, and that includes four seconds of penalties. And uh, straight into David Lorente of Spain, who is another young competitor who has uh, been putting in some good results. Sixth last weekend in Lee Valley. Fifth at the Europeans in uh, Po earlier on this season. Yeah, David's having a really strong season so far. He just um, absolutely smashed the first difficult move in the pinball section. He's at point, uh, one down on Etty's split at the top. Um, so we'll just see what he can do in this middle and bottom section. Etienne did have to back off between gate 17 and 18. Um, so I think we see the guys who do that forwards um, and smoothly will actually go a lot faster. He's choosing to spin in gate 12 as well. Um, again, Etienne smashed that forwards. So I think perhaps the faster guys will choose to go forwards. Uh. Well, it'd be interesting to see as we watch this uh, men's K1 semi-final unfold, just how much uh, risk taking we see from some of the paddlers because We've seen in some of the other categories that this course uh, can be quite uh, brutal. And uh, David Lorente now has the advantage, 0.79, and he's definitely very smooth through the downstream sequence. Yeah, he's really smooth through the stagger. Um, very tight through it as well, though. Ah, we just saw him go upstream, and he's been, uh, he was too tight on the stagger under the bridge. He's picked up a 50-second penalty on gate 17. And um, a two-second penalty on 21. So it's all gone wrong for David Lorente of Spain after such a promising, fluid, smooth start. Yeah. David Lorente of Spain will not feature in the final later on today. And uh, uh, his time, well, it's a good time because it's uh, around about 95 seconds yeah. the raw time but uh, 52 seconds of penalties and uh, puts him into second place yeah. Etienne Chapel leads for Great Britain at the early stages of this 40 boat semi-final with yeah. just 10 boats up for grabs. Um, the last six gates of the course is some of the hardest paddling we'll see in the world. They're some of the most difficult moves that paddlers will have to cope with on any circuit. Um, so we are really separating the ones you can cope with the physical stress of being at the bottom of a full run, also with the technical um, ability you have to have to complete these moves. Well, on course now for Japan, it is Kazuya Adachi and uh, the Japanese using this race as one of their selection races for the Olympic Games and of course they're hosting the Olympic Games in Tokyo in around about 400 days time and already a two second penalty showing on the upstream gate three for Adachi of Japan. Yeah, it's super cool to see him in the semi-final, though. The, um, the Japanese spend a lot of time here in Bratislava. Um, Takoya Haneda in the C1 category lives here. Um, 
So they are quite familiar with this course, and we are seeing that in the way he copes with gate 12, because it is a difficult move um, to stay neutral, and we may see him pick up some time back on the split in this bottom section. Well, let's watch as he comes nicely through 14 yeah, now. Really nice. It's this critical section, 15, well, these six downstream gates in a row. It's so important, this move here, 17, to uh, not take too many risks, and nicely done for the Japanese paddler as he comes down towards the Niagara drop. Yeah, we'll see him take it on the downstream blade. We haven't seen any of the men go in on the upstream blade. It was the same with the C1 women. We saw the best girls go in on the left stroke to push their nose down into the back of the eddy. Um, and just now we're seeing quite a lot of safe lines, I think. People using their right-hand blade to feel really secure, like they're not going to fall in. Well, um, it's going to take the race lead, surely. Oh, uh, uh, Kazuya Adachi of Japan goes into the race lead, taking that. To, yeah, he's feeling the bottom of his boat. Yeah. See if he did any damage. That's where Luca Jones went yeah. yesterday <laughs> in the final, but it worked for her. She got a silver medal. Yeah. And Adachi of Japan takes the race lead. That does include a two-second penalty. And we can already see the times starting to come down. Martin Srobotnik of Slovenia up next. And uh, another quick, well, anyone who qualifies for the Slovenian senior team, you know is going to be quick. Yeah. He was sixth at the under-23 Worlds in 2015. Yeah, he will train in Tassin, um, and as all paddlers know, it's got one of the biggest drops in Canoe Slalom at the top of the course, so they're very familiar with having to deal with high-stress white water very early on in the game. Well, um, except in Bratislava, they also have difficult white water at the end of the game as well. <laughs> well, he's uh, delivered the top section, 4.6 up on race leader Adachi of Japan. So, uh, Srebrnik of Slovenia. Looking like he's composed. Probably not the best moves through 11 and 12 there, he but he won't lose the race there. This is, well, he will if he takes another penalty, though. Touch on the upstream gate 13, and suddenly his advantage is probably going to be trimmed. He's slipping away from him a little, but uh, he really nice through 17. He's still one second up on the split with four seconds of penalties, but we can see him really attacking this next move. I wonder if we'll see him use the upstream blade. No, it's still downstream, and then catching it on the upstream. So he's still coming a little low. I think people are going to have to watch the C1 women's um, top boots, uh, learn from them, and see that they're using the upstream blade to jump into the upstream. Well, gate 22, I still think Etienne Chapel at the moment oh. is the person who's dealt it the best. Best and uh, but six seconds of penalties now. Srebotnik of Slovenia <laughs> takes the race lead, but look at that time 94.88 includes six seconds of penalties, and that gives us a marker of the kind of time we'd be expecting to make it into that top 10. Under 90 seconds is what I was speculating, yeah. and that shows that well, he's done an 88.88. That was clean. I think he'd be uh, getting ready for the final already. Yeah, yeah, I think 88 is a good time. He can be, um, although I think there's still a little time to be shaved off of that. He was uh, a little caught up in gate 12, um, but he was really great through the rest of the moves, so I think he'll be really frustrated with his touches there. But you never know what can happen here, because I do think there's going to be a lot of penalties going through this uh, round. Oh, I would agree, and uh, but I think in order to get into the top ten, you can't afford that kind of penalty. So uh, it's Slovenia leading, oh. and now it is Slovenia's Nico Testen on course, yeah, he's looking to challenge that. And what a recovery on the top part of the course. Yeah, he just um, showcased the Slovenian uh, sprint ability there to get use the second wave on that feature. See, he's about four seconds down on the split, but again, there's been some slow moves at the bottom, so he may be able to make that back up again. Well, he um, finished to ninth last weekend in the... Uh, Lee Valley World Cup race, so he made the final in that event. So uh, he's certainly no stranger to that. And equally, he has been in finals before at under 23 level, where, well, under 23 worlds last year, he was eighth. Yeah, he's uh, showing a really calm kind of uh, reserve style just now, making sure that he's at the same speed as the water so that the stopper moves have the maximum effect on his boat. So smooth through 17 there. He's just keeping it really balanced in the middle of his boat for this stagger sequence. I think we'll probably see him use the upstream blade going into this up. Yeah, see him jump on the right, on the left hand side, and now he's really tightening up. Going to get a really great exit from there, get his nose down, jump again on the right for the next upstream in gate 22. Little bit low there, losing a bit of time, but I think we may see a race leader coming from this. Oh, oh ah, he smashed the last gate. It's a really difficult one because it's half in the eddy. Oh, he'll be so frustrated with that. Well, the time slips away there for Nico Testen of Slovenia. 
and uh, the, that late penalty on the bottom section and only into third place so Martin Srebotnik of Slovenia leads ahead of Kazuya Adachi of Japan and then Nico Testen of Slovenia is the top three as we well let's watch this person because he's the world number one Vit Prindis of the Czech Republic had two attempts basically to get through into yeah. the semi-final he picked up a 50 second penalty on the first run of the heat but he came storming back and this is someone we'd expect to set the pace here and i'm sure a lot of the paddlers later on will be watching a lot of the paddlers still to race will be watching to see what vit does and what they can take into this time well it's a good time 25 and a half like i say you don't win the race at the top yeah but you can lose it vit prindis is in touch on the top section yeah he's well in contact here and um, it just shows you how difficult this course is that someone the caliber of vit prindis is having trouble getting through the heats into the semi-final and um, he's really calm composed and smooth here though see him using the water to get maximum speed out of the eddy and into the next section so um, he has he has four world cup wins to his name and he was the european champion early on this season and look at the margin he is going to take a big advantage into gate 17. oh this is perfect he's so smooth all forward strokes he didn't even do a rudder in that section just a slight push back on the stopper and um, see him cruising in towards the Agata, and he's jumping in on the left hand side a little low but still that's probably one of the best ones we're going to see in gate 21. super composed paddling from vit prindis of the czech republic and we are watching the race leader here surely as long as he delivers 23 vit prindis is setting the pace for everybody else to chase under 90 yeah. seconds 89.51 and well he'll be relieved he will have to wait to see whether that's enough but i would comfortably say that uh, that is going to make it into the final yeah i think sub 90 um, will make it into the final for the k1 men it's still not the fastest run we've seen and um, martin srebotnik um, put down an 88 uh, so there's still maybe a bit of time but i think vitz run was essentially perfect so i think that will be the time to beat to get into the final super composed from vit prindis yeah. there the world number one well daniel watkins of australia is up next and uh, he made the final last weekend in lee valley it didn't go well for him in the final he finished in 10th place picked up penalties what can he do here well the job is to get into the top 10 and he's superb from five to six really working well with the white water um, i think he may have had the fastest raw time in the heat uh, runs he's having a really fast season he's just having to really manage Manage those penalties that he's picking up in various places, but he's paddling so well this season, and um, it's really cool to see his name up there with some of the really awesome, experienced guys as well. So the Australian team have uh, really, really been benefiting from performance. Oh, oh. Performances uh, because of that facility built for the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney. But uh, a 50-second penalty just goes too deep into the upstream gate 13. Yeah, he has a duck forwards through it, and I think he may have picked up a half head, and that will be under protest for sure. Uh, this is really sad because he's flying through this last section, and I think we'll see a very fast raw time here. And it's really interesting. One of my observations would be here is, again, we're seeing someone who's looking oh. really composed. They're not visibly taking too many risks, but no. they are delivering the fast time, just like Vit Prindis. Yeah. Unfortunately, obviously, that mistake deep in third, team has cost him dearly oh, it's savage but, as well uh, that's the nicest we've seen gates 21 and 22 executed and um, he's super fast to the finish yeah and i think he'll be pretty frustrated with that um, wow that's a 90 second raw time so yeah that's a, a good performance from daniel watkins but yet yeah, 54 seconds of penalties and it's not going to be another final for him in this second world cup but uh, he'll be looking forward now to the third world cup of the season next weekend which takes place in Tartsen in Slovenia, just outside of Ljubljana. And uh, we'll be live next weekend on Planet Canoe, so you can follow the action too. So next up is Spain's Juan Crespo. And uh, always a fast paddler, always in and around the uh, final zone, but uh, not quite the consistency required of some of the real top paddlers to consistently make it into the finals. Yeah, Hans a really experienced paddler. Um, we've seen him throwing down some amazing times in finals, but sometimes the penalties can catch up with him. Uh, I'm really excited to see what he can do here because he does look great on Bratislava. Um, and he knows this course very well, so he's one second down on the first split, but again, we've seen people take a lot of time off on the bottom. I think Vit was around one second down on the first split as well. 
He's really tight into that spin. I wonder if he's going to go forwards or spin gate 12. I think he's going to be forced to spin that. I think he may have planned to go forwards, um, but he's going to use this wave to carve up into gate 13, yeah, sweep around the inside pole. He definitely was trying to get that move forward onto 12, but I think yeah. wisely went for the spin. And uh, so far, he's still in touch, I would say, with the, uh, the time. It's going to be... Uh, two, three seconds down, is it? Let's we'll yeah. find out here. Just under, just under three seconds. Juan Crespo of Spain, still yeah. in the mix, is keeping it clean. No penalties so far. Yeah, but this is where it's going to be. He's got to find some time, and he's got to be on these moves. Yeah, and he's using that left blade. That was really beautiful into gate 21. Um, we'll just see how well he copes with gate 22. Really tight in a high, just touch the outside pole with the end of his nose. It's really hard to judge how much a boat's going to kick up in that eddy because the water does change there all the time. But for the finish sprint, he's staying in the flow, keeping it smooth, but he'll be pretty disappointed with that, I think. Into fourth place, and you just get to see uh, how quickly the time slips away on that bottom section. Yeah. If you don't deliver it, he was in touch, and there's David Lorente there watching his compatriot go down the course, and of course... David Lorente picking up a 50-second penalty uh, on his run. So, Vit Prindis still leads for the Czech Republic, ahead of Martin Srebotnik of Slovenia. Kazuya Adachi of Japan is third at the moment, as we've still got 30 boats to go in this the men's K1 semi-final here in Bratislava. The sun is starting to come out in Slovakia, and the action hotting up here. Yeah, Matthew Dobi has a really smooth style. He's with the flow all the time, and his style suits using rudder ups in these gates. Uh, that suits Bratislava because you have to have your nose down for a lot of the moves, and he's very experienced, so he'll be able to harness that. 0 .3, uh, 0 0.7 seconds down on the first split, but I think we'll see his experience taking hold here. Um, and perhaps speeding up in the middle section. Smooth into that spin in the middle. I think we may see him going forwards in gate 12. A little slow, he's getting caught up a bit in the eddy and having to fight to get his nose back upstream again for the cross, but sweeping really easily around gate 13. Well, Mathieu Derby, he has been on the World Cup oh. podium, but oh, look at that, he just clips the uh, obstacle on the side of the course. No penalties gathered for that, but that really just unsettles you and uh, costs you a little bit on the clock. But he's still in touch at the split time. Yeah, he's only two seconds down on the split, and we can see how composed he is through this section. He's able to use just forward strokes, so if he smashes these last two upstreams, I think we'll see a new race leader, potentially. See him just setting up, jumping in on the left blade, well, Vit Prindis will be so pleased that he's delivered something and he's uh, got it in the bank because uh, uh, you know, Matteo Derby, it's a respectable run down the bottom here, but you can see the time slipping away now as he yeah. takes the sprint finish. It's going to be outside of the race lead time. It's a good run. But, it uh, was a good run, but I think he was a little cautious. Uh, he's kind of happy with that because he didn't have any big mistakes. Um, he did spear the side of the wall. Um, which slowed him down definitely going into one part, but um, yeah, well, I think we'll see. 93 81 for Matteo Dobi as we see uh, Darius Popiella there with his uh, father, who's his coach. He'll be off uh, very late on in this competition, but we'll look forward to seeing him. Next up on course, it is Lucas Vero of Switzerland, eighth back in the under 23 world back in 2013, and has been on the circuit for. Well, many years now, always features in the semi-finals, but uh, never yet really made that big breakthrough. Is today going to be the day on this tricky course? Yeah, Lucas has shown that he can put down really fast run times. He just needs to be able to hold it together and not have any big mistakes at the end of the run. Um, this is definitely a course to test that, uh, but we'll just see his class coming into show in this middle section. He's going forwards on gate 11, which gives you a more difficult entry onto that wave, and it does mean that he'll have to spin gate 12. Well, the Swiss team, his uh, representation, we had uh, Thomas Kirchlin uh, of uh, Switzerland yesterday missing out on the, the place in the final in the, in the men's C1 event. Can we see Switzerland represented in this men's kayak final? Well, he's still in touch. He was just a fraction down, and look at that. He is in touch, but I think down this bottom section, we see just how good Vit Prindis, our race leader, was for the Czech Republic. So Lucas Vera really needs to deliver this move on 21. And oh, it's he's a little low in gate 21. Vit did make it very difficult for people to get time back on him in the bottom section. Uh, we're seeing a lot of people being up on the second split um, into that difficult stagger move, but he was so flawless through the last six gates. 
and he has made it a very difficult time to chase. Well, it's a good time for Lucas Vero of Switzerland, and he's put it competitively down there into second place, 93.25. But as you can see from his body language, he knows he's, he's left it out there. It's, yeah. um, he's left a gap, and it's going to be a long wait. Yeah, he was a little late into gate 21. Um, he jumped um, a little too soon, which meant he swept down the eddy a tiny bit. I think that's where the time is going to end up being. He might have been the same time as Vic going through there, but it's hard to tell on this difficult course. Well, just like the British uh, A team, uh, not here in Bratislava this weekend. Uh, also, we've had a, you know, there's a number of Germans not here, but the Italian A team not here either. But on course, it is one of those young, oh. fast Italians, Marco Vianello. But, uh, oh, it's so brutal. Sometimes that curl just opens up and lets your boat go. You expect it to really carry you from left to right. Uh, we've seen a couple of tragedies in the K1 women, uh, C1 women, C1 men and K1 men in that section. You just expect it to move your boat for you, and it just lets you go straight past gate five. Well, you could say that... Um you know, canoe slalom is brutal. It's very harsh. You go from hero to zero in in a matter of moments. Yeah. But in some ways, I think many people would say that that's what makes canoe slalom so exciting and so special. Yeah, it's the most beautiful sport in the whole world because you have to be able to cope with mistakes. You see some of the best paddlers in the world, like Jess we saw earlier, coping with some catastrophic mistakes, which unfortunately put her out of the final. But still, let her put down a respectable time. Like she was very close to it, even with some mistakes that other paddlers wouldn't have been able to cope with. Um, but Slalom is super special because it showcases calm mindset and being able to deal with problems as they come. So as we've seen, really, you know, no course in Canoe Slalom is a respecter of reputations. It can destroy <laughs> reputations and uh, challenge uh, even oh, the best great. in the world. But uh, Marco Vianello of Italy still paddling really well yeah. down this course, but that blemish on gate five will mean he doesn't progress through into this afternoon's final yeah, he's and really, into 11th place. Yeah, he really showcased beautiful paddling in that last couple of sections. Um, really great sportsman to carry on and finish the course and show the other guys how to do it, show what he's actually capable of on the most difficult sections. Uh, just had really, really tough luck in that bit. Vit Prindis still leading for the Czech Republic, 89.51, a very competitive time. Lucas Vero of Switzerland in second place at the moment, 93.25. Mathieu Duby of Belgium in third. As we calm down, well, we've got 26 boats left to go in this men's kayak semi-final. And now representing Ireland... It is Noel Hendrick. Yeah, Noel Hendrick's a really young Irish paddler. Um, he spent some time in Nottingham, um, and he's made some amazing progression over the last couple of years. He can be really proud of his season so far. Um, super cool to see him racing like this. He's up, up on the first split. Um, I think well, it would be really interesting to see what he can do in this last section, but he's really put some work in over the winter, and you can totally see that in his paddling. Ah, oh, yes, this is great start from Noel as he comes in 11 and 12. It's good on 11 12. He doesn't take any risks there. He's probably maybe lost a bit of the advantage on uh, he had on Vit Prindis, but uh, the job isn't about uh, him comparing himself with others at this stage. It's about him delivering at his best, and I think that is what he's doing at the moment. Yeah, he's really smashing this. Um, you can see him setting up. He's not rushing through this last section. He's just making sure that, oh, it was really fast through gate 17, 18, uh, really coping with the stagger nicely. It's great to see world-class paddling here. Um, oh, he's just coming a little wide on the drop section. This can be to his advantage if he can jump in. Ah, oh, oh, really tight into gate 21. Uh, we'll see what the judge says about that. But again, great run. He's oh. picked up a half head there, I think. He has not oh, got his so hole. fast in the last upstream. That was great. Um, uh, such a shame. He could be really proud of his paddling today, though. Um, I know he's got a couple of mistakes, but... Honestly, that was... Well, Noel Hendrick of Ireland goes into 13th place. What a great performance on the top half of the course for the young Irish paddler. But the course bites back on the bottom part of the course because two 50-second penalties shows just how hard it is um, to deliver the whole run down. But next up, it is Isaac Erström yeah, from he's... Sweden. Yeah, Isaac qualified in his first run earlier. He said to me um, earlier in the week that uh, that's the first race in quite a long time he's managed to qualify on his first run, so he's super stoked with that. He feels um, as though he's finally reflecting his paddling. He's picked up an early touch on gate four, but he'll be able to cope with this. I'm still um, 
Not sure that, that will mean too much in the grand scheme of the race course. Um, super fast through this section. He's at 1.83 down on the split, but that's with the touch, so he's actually up on the time. If we can see him carrying the speed through the rest of the course, he should be all right. Well, let's see this comes into the grandstand section here. Yeah, really Three. composed. Um, I think he was setting up to go forwards there, but he's had to change his plan and go with the spin on gate 12, just making sure he keeps his nose up and into the back of gate 13. There is a little rock there that's kind of hard to avoid with your tail, um, but he's still carrying good speed into the rest of the course. Well, this comes out of gate 14. We'll get an indication as he comes through 16 to 17 as to where he stacks on the sprint. He's in touch on that split time and actually that's uh, he's actually faster in raw time than vit prindis of the czech republic yeah. but this is where vit was so good yeah. into the upstream gate 21 but yes, so he's too Oh, he's really struggling to and get out onto the floor there. He's just going to have to get his nose down into gate 22. He's coming a little low, just if he can hang on to this really great time that he has, he should see maybe a good result. Just force his nose down for this final sprint. Oh, and it's a little out of touch. I'm not sure where that's going to put him. Right second, though. Well, into second place for Isaac Orstrom. It's a damage limitation on the bottom section, but Vit Prindis is still leading for the Czech Republic. Sweden's Isaac Orstrom is second. Lucas Vero of Switzerland is in third. Mathieu Derby of Belgium in fourth. Uh, so now next up will be Brazil's Mathieu Desnos, 25-year-old paddler who uh, took bronze at the Under-23 World Championships in 2017 and now launches his campaign for a place in oh. the final. And already, what a uh. big hit to that wave between gate one and two. Yeah, he really coped with that going through gate two. He managed to get his head inside the gate, um, but it is a changeable bit of water. Sometimes it is hard to manage that bit of stagger. It's different to how it was in the heat. Um, he's just coming off the back of this curl here. Again, really changeable bit of water, but he's coped with that really well. Just getting his nose down for gate seven. Well, super smooth on the top section. He has picked up a two-second penalty on the upstream gate six, and that is a four-second deficit at this stage. But there's Nos of Brazil really showing his, uh, well, his composure, but he can't afford to be taking too much in a way of caution on this course. Yeah, you can see him just letting his nose come down on each wave. He's a little t uh, wide into the back of gate 13, um, just struggling to keep the speed there. I think he's going to need to get the boat moving a little bit for this next stag because he is very behind on this split. Yeah, so he's already outside the split time, and the split time is not until gate 16 to 17. There we have 6.74 seconds, so the Brazilian, well, he does do a good section through 17, 18, 19, but I think it's too much to ask, even if he delivers this bottom section, which he does indeed, that's how to do gate 21. High risk move, but yeah, it works yeah. there. Ah, uh, and he's just let his nose come up a little too high on the right um, to get really nice into gate 22, but he had such a great last upstream. Um, yeah, even if he puts on the gas now, I'm not sure he'll be in touch with that time. So into seventh place for Desnos of Brazil. And, well, it all really started the top section. It, whilst he did come out of there fairly unscathed, he uh, lost a lot of time just having to be reactive to the white water. Yeah, he had to react really hard on gate two, and I think that's pretty difficult to cope with right at the beginning of such a tough course. So 16 boats now finished in this 40-boat semi-final. And don't forget, only 10 places up for grabs in this afternoon's final. Brutal cut-off. And next up for Switzerland, Manuel Munch. Manuel Munch is, uh, well, he's a good competitor. He was fifth at the Under-23 World Championships last year in Ivrea in northern Italy. Yeah, Manuel's an experienced paddler, and he spends a lot of time in Bratislava. Um, so he does know this course very well. He'll be expecting the water to change. Um, in the difficult moves, and we can see that he's only 1.4 down on the split, which so far doesn't mean anything. Fit Prindish was nearly a second down on the first split, and he's still putting in an amazing time. Well, let's wait and see, because uh, Manuel Munch is definitely capable of uh, getting into the final, but he's going to have to do something special, because he is keeping it clean, he's keeping it tidy, but he's not as quick, I think, as uh, some of the competitors we've seen down so far. Yeah, he was super fast through gate 13 and very nice through gate 14 as well. Um, he's managing not to slide out too much in these upstreams, but he's gonna. this is the real tell. Uh, he's only barely two seconds off the split, 
uh, so fast through this section though and he's actually starting to put speed on as well you can see that he's able to paddle through it rather than just drifting through it like some of the other guys are having to do uh, super nice into gate 21 just ah, getting caught a bit on the exit he needs to put his nose down on the right hand side of this wave jump into the back of 22 super tight just make sure that he gets out nice and sharp so that he can pull his nose down into the finish line great run from Manuel Murch of Switzerland as he stays in the fast water through 23 but the time has slipped away on the bottom section it was a good run overall yeah, it's it was... clean but it just slips away those little errors little uh, margins like in the upstream 21 he nailed the entry but yeah. he just got stuck in the gate just line caught up a bit on the exit um, again he can't be annoyed with that though because it was still a really great run just we did see Vip Prindish staying incredibly composed in the last three gates and um, so I think to match that's going to be hard work well Switzerland again because next up it is Martin Dugud who was uh, 14th at the uh, European Championships earlier on this year just missing out on well, in fact he was in the final at the European Championships because the European Championships have a, uh, a top 15 cut off yeah. And uh, he was outside of the final last weekend in Lee Valley at the first World Cup race of the season. Yeah, and he's really smooth through this first section. Um, I think he's going to put down... Uh, he's a little behind the split, um, but he's carrying loads of speed through this bit. He's going to have to slow down a little bit before the spin, unless he chooses to go forwards on this section. No, he is going for the spin, and we'll see if he chooses spin or forwards on gate 12. Um, a spin again, I was a bit surprised. He was probably in quite a good position to go forwards there. Uh, we'll see if he can keep tight to the inside pole on gate 13. Drifting a little wide, but still carrying the speed out nicely. See, his boat hasn't really slowed down in this whole section. Able to pop out of the up at 14. And we'll see him take the speed right off here. He is carrying a little bit of speed into this. And you see him touch the gate uh, nice and tight through the stagger, though. He is... Really so, fast through this section. So he's virtually, he's around about 3.8 seconds down now on the split time. And uh, he comes in very nicely into the upstream 21. That's a high risk move, but it works for him. He's jumping in, keeps the boat dry, and 22 is good as well. But yep. that two second penalty on gate 16 is going to prove costly as he uh, comes down towards the finish line. It's a good run for Martin Dugud of Switzerland into third place. 92 89 total. So it is a good run. <laughs> But uh, that two-second penalty in particular, leaving the door open for those still to come yeah. and into third place. He's a great showman. Um, that was a really nice run. And I think we'll see some even nicer bottom sections coming through. Kieran Lee Edwards coming up. He trains in London um, at the moment. He's pretty new to the World Cup circuit, but he's really shown that he can have some class and qualify first runs for the semi-finals. Um, he's spent a bit of time here before, so um, he knows the course pretty well, and I think we'll see exactly what he's capable of in this final. Taking the punt on gate three, but I think he may have picked up him. Well, let's see. Kieran Lee Edwards getting a good kick off from four to five. Now into the upstream gate six. Quite a few penalties being picked up on the upstream six. No problems there for Kieran Lee Edwards for Great Britain as he comes out of that difficult section. Two seconds down on Vip Prindis. And, uh, well, he's going to have to just uh, make sure he doesn't let the time slip away anymore. But yeah, like you said earlier, Andy, I don't think you uh, win on the top section. I think you can lose it, though. He's getting caught upstream in gate 12. He'll have to do something pretty special now to get the speed back on the boat. Uh, he's coming a little wide in 13, but he's going to have to put the gas on. Kieran's a really f uh, physically fit paddler, so I think he'll be able to keep the pressure on the blade here where some of the other men may struggle. Well, he puts a huge amount of pressure on the top three British men's kayak in that selection process, ending up actually coming out fourth in the process. But uh, he went down to the last run of the last race and, uh, you know, had the likes of Chris Bowers and Bradley Forbes Cryans uh, certainly uh, looking in their mirrors very tightly indeed. As yeah. he comes over the bottom drop into 21 and oh, it's too tight. It's too tight, but he's dealing with this mistake really well. He's just pulling it back round again to get over. I don't think this will be a very competitive time, but actually we've seen some really nice paddling he's a little he's too early into gate 22 that's such a hard move to recover from he's just come around the right hand side of it and he'll just be looking to finish this as fast as he can well it's a respectable run from Kieran Lee Edwards of Great Britain but the bottom section has bitten and only into 12th place for him disappointment there but uh, it is still Vit Prindis leading for the Czech Republic ahead of Isaac Urstrom of Sweden and then Martin Dugud of Switzerland 
is in third place at the moment as we actually get towards the halfway point in this men's K1 semi-final. And, well, here's a big name, Mikhail Smolan of the United States of America. Yeah, Mikhail is an experienced paddler on the international circuit. Um, it'll be really interesting to see what the cutoff time is. So far, we've only had four clean runs out of nearly 20 paddlers. Um, so I'm intrigued to see how many clean runs actually go into the final. He's only 0 0.25 seconds down on the first split set by Vic Prindish. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what he can do here. Well, Mikhail Smolan is a bronze medalist at the World Championships in 2015. And he's also an under-23 world champion. So he has a calibre, but uh, a little bit sticky on that middle section. Yeah, really tight um, exit from the inside pole there on the upstream. So he'll be pretty happy with that. Um, just ducking his head around this upstream. He doesn't need too much space for this next target, just the trick is to take the speed off the boat for this stop move. Right, we're into the business end of the course and he's in touch. So yeah. Mikhail Smolan has done what he needed to do on the top half, but now he's got to do it all over again because he's got to deliver the bottom section and into the upstream 21. Well, he's tight. Ah, really tight. Um, he may struggle on the exit a little, but that was still a very good example of what can be done on that upstream. He's showcasing a very narrow grip style. Um, it's a little narrower than lots of men select for their own styles, uh, but it seems to really work for him, and he's going to put in a very competitive time now, I think. Well, let's watch him as to finish. It's outside the race lead time, but it is into second place for the United States of America. Mikhail Smolan goes in 91.59, and, uh, well, yeah, changing the top three into second place. Isaac Erström of Sweden drops down to third. So we are at the halfway point in this men's K1 semi-final. Just yeah. 10 spots up for grabs in this uh, competition in the final. And uh, Mastarin Madora of France is on course now. Very fast paddler and very... Uh, well, you could say very experienced, but not on the senior stage. The French uh, men's kite team so hard to get in, then you have yeah. to almost do your apprenticeship uh, in the other events. Yeah, you, um, it's a really tough selection series. France is one of the best countries in the world at canoe slalom, um, so they have a really tough fight to make the senior team. Uh, he is 0 0.58 seconds up on the split. Um, he's just showing that he's really calm here. He's not rushing into these moves, but he's really whipping it around for that spin, and I think we'll see... Uh, perhaps an unplanned spin in gate 12 and he'll just want to drop his nose onto this wave so that he can spin around right. and he's gone deep in 12 and taken a penalty on the back of his buoyancy aid there so yeah. um, the advantage is gone now but uh, he needs to keep his cool as he goes in and out of 14 nicely yeah. if he keeps calm keeps composed then it's not all over but he's certainly on his back foot now as look at that 1.13 seconds down so he can still get into the final, but it's going to need something special on the bottom three gates. Yeah, he's really gathering speed here. We'll just see how well he comes into gate 21. Beautiful into gate 21. Just a really nice exit as well. He's caught with his nose up a little. He needs to sweep it down into gate 22. Cope with that really nicely, but still, it wasn't quite as nice as Vic Prindish. But I think we're going to see a competitive time here. Well, let's watch as Madora of France comes into the finish line. It's going to be a quick time. It's under oh. 90 seconds, but that touch on gate 12 and you can see in his face he knows that that has left the door open but into second place though Mathurin Madora of France goes into second place ahead of Mikhail Smolan of the United States of America but it is still Czech Republic leading with Vit Prindis and that time 89.51 so, uh, yeah, it won't be long before we start to get an indication of who has qualified through. We've still got some big names to come. Next on course, Michael Taylor of Canada. Represented Canada at the Olympic Games in Rio, finishing 16th oh. at those Olympic Games last weekend. He was 28th at the uh, Lee Valley World Cup, so didn't make it through to the final. And he's hugely wide on four, takes a touch. Yeah, he's having a tough run so far. He caught his nose in gate three against the wall. Um, that eddy's pretty narrow, so you have to whip the nose around before it touches the wall, but I think he just caught, caught between a couple of rocks there. Uh, he's pretty down on the split. Again, there's some special things going on in the middle of the course, so we'll see what he can do, but I think he's going to have to make sure that he stays very flat in this section. It's a real experience move here. It's very tempting... Ah, uh, I see he's just dropped below gate 12 there. He's going to struggle to make that back up in time. So he cut the line from 11 to 12, and he missed. He dropped off the back of the wave, and as you can see, yes, he ended up 
dropping off, going round the back and taking an extra penalty. So he's really up against it, I'm afraid to say. To Michael Taylor for Canada surely has got too much to do on the bottom part of the course to get into the final. 8.3 yeah. seconds down now, and he's still got the business end of the course to go. Yeah, and Vitprin just made it very difficult to chase his time at the bottom because his last two upstreams were almost perfect. Um, oh, oh, Michael Turner did a really nice up there. He'll be so frustrated that that wasn't at the end of a better run. Um, Oh, so nice into gate 22 as well. Really uh, tight exit. That's probably the nicest we've seen it so far. So effortless would be a yeah. description. Certainly made it look really, uh, well, really easy and certainly made the water do all the work. Michael Taylor of Canada only into 14th place, not into the final. But uh, you, you could clearly see there were bits of that run which were right on the pace. But Vitprint is still leading ahead of Maturin Medora of France and Michal Smolen of the United States as we start to get in. I think there's 18 more boats to go in this, the men's kayak semi-final. Next up, Timothy Anderson of Australia. Yeah, Tim has a really nice feeling for the water. Um, he trains in Penrith with the Australian team, um, so he's good at white water. He'll have a good feeling for how the curls work. Um, maybe even some tolerance for how much the water changes here. Uh, he's fighting through this section a little bit, so I think the trick here is to make sure that you go kind of smooth through that move, but without wasting too much energy. And we yeah. can see that he's done that with 1.4 seconds on Yeah, I'd agree. He's fighting, but he's, he's managed to deliver. He's been attacking uh, through that section, so what can he do here? Will he take it on forwards? It looks like, well, he was thinking about it, but he's gone for the double spin. Yeah, I think he's making sure that he stays really flat in that spin so that he doesn't get carried forwards and have to nick the, um, the green gate. He's a little wide in gate 13. We can see that he maybe touched the back pole of it. Really tight in gate 14. You can see him lifting his head to make sure that the judges can see that he got his whole head through the gate. Well, how good was that? It, it was, looks um, like he uh, found some extra length in his neck just when it was required. And, uh, um, well, four seconds down the deficit for Tim Anderson as he comes into the upstream gate 21. Yeah, he's getting a little wild at the bottom of the run. Super nice into gate 21. Really smooth exit from there. Um, you can see him dragging his nose down, jumping in front of gate 22, and just losing a little bit of height there. And, uh, and another it on the penalty way now. So six seconds of penalties. It's not going to be, unfortunately, for Tim Anderson of Australia as he comes to the finish line. But yeah, it's a good time. 92:29 is the raw time. Yeah. But it's fast and clean is the name of the game, and that puts him down. So still, Vit Prindis leading for the Czech Republic ahead of Maturin Madora of France and Michal Smolen of the United. States of America. Yeah. So we stay in the Southern Hemisphere for our next competitor. It is Finn Butcher for New Zealand. And Finn Butcher, well, he was only 30th last weekend at Lee Valley, but uh, uh, he is a strong contender, fourth at the Under-23 World Championships in Ivrea last year. Yeah, and we've seen the Kiwi boys paddling really improve over the last couple of years. They're putting down run times that are super competitive with some of the best paddlers in the world. Um, so I think, like, some more years of tuning, um, and they'll be really up there. They'll be super competitive. Um, do you think that's uh, linked to the new course they've got at uh, just outside of Auckland, uh, in fact, literally under the flight path of Auckland Airport? Yeah, so they've um, put a new whitewater centre in um, Manukau, which is just outside of Auckland, and it's a difficult course. It's super heavy. It's kind of how London was when it started. Um, yeah, that they've not quite refined the curls yet, but it does mean the Kiwi guys are really good at keeping speed on the boats through some very difficult white water. Well, Finn Butcher is certainly keeping speed on the boat. He's uh, good in the middle section. He was up on the split of the top. Well, he's just caught the tail on the exit of 14. It won't cost him uh, any penalties, but uh, uh, it uh, the... looks like he has maintained that advantage. Finn Butcher is on the charge for New Zealand. Well, maybe he was boosted by the silver medal from Luca Jones on this course yesterday in the women's kayak event. But uh, oh. Coming low and touching the gate with the end of his nose uh, in 21. He may be able to keep the speed here. Uh, he's not nailing these gates quite as well as Vit did, but we have seen that he was up on the most recent split, so if he can hold it together, perhaps he'll still be in with a chance in the finals. Well, what a time oh. from Finn Butcher of New Zealand. 92.55. Oh, no. It includes a two-second penalty. Well, well done, Finn. Into fourth place for New Zealand. It's, we'll have to wait and see whether that is enough. Yeah, but, uh, I think he carried a bit too much speed into that bridge section. I think you have to really ease off the speed there. Um, and make sure the water can do exactly what it's supposed to do to your boat. 
So, Prind is leading for the Czech Republic. Medora of France second. Smolan of the United States third. And now we are into our next competitor from Germany, Fabian Schweikert. Yeah, the K1 men had a tough selection series again this year. I think it was between um, Schweikert and uh, Stefan Hengst for the final spot and Max Einer as well. Um, so really difficult selection series for them, um, but we do see some of the best paddlers in the world. They're reigning world champions, Germans, Hannes Eigner. Um, so they do have a high standard, a really competitive training group, and it'd be great to see what he can do here. Well, he's in touch at the split, just 0.41 of a second down, so he's delivered the top section exactly how he needs. He's choosing to spin in gate 11. I wonder if he'll go forwards on gate 12. He's choosing to spin again. I think some more of the men are going to choose to go forwards here because it carries you down the eddy, which sets you up a little nicer to get into the wave before 13. We're seeing a lot of guys swing very wide on 13 and take a touch in the back of the wind series. Well, he ducks in and out of 13 nicely, in and out of 14 nicely. Schweikert of Germany now looking very smooth as he comes down into 17 and he's found oh, some one time. Second. One second up on our race leader. So it is looking good for the German as he comes in towards gate 21. Yeah, the German's a super fit paddle. Ah, he's just in a little too early in gate 21 and he chose to come back around to the flow side of the gate, which means he's getting pushed right to the back of the eddy. Oh, what a total nightmare. Uh, so cruel our sport because yeah. he's gone from virtual race leader to outside oh. of the uh, final now, unfortunately. Um, so Fabian Schweiker of Germany will not be in the final. And uh, so cruel because the top 20 gates were absolutely world class. Yeah, that was a really great run. He'll be so frustrated with that. He's just missing the last gate, but he knows it's over from the last two ups. Um, what's quite interesting is that the way Vic Prindish did the last upstream different to everybody else, he came in, jumped and took it on a rudder. A lot of the guys you can see setting up are jumping and then catching again on a reverse, and I think it's because they're setting up to sweep around it. Yeah, and it's interesting how much of that is just determined by your exit from 21, because yeah. you don't always get to choose your exit, yeah. you just have to go with it, and yeah. then you have to be really reactive and get the right decision making on 22. But next up, it is the competitor for Japan, Kazuki Yazawa, very experienced paddler yeah, on the circuit and has been at the Olympic Games for Japan. Yeah, Kazuki's um, actually a monk from Japan, um, so he's got a super chill mindset. He has a Slovak coach as well who comes to Japan to train with him quite a lot. Um, yeah, so he's very familiar with this course. He'll be feeling really relaxed here and I think just coping with the moves extremely well. So, the top part of the course then... Uh, Coming into the upstream gate 13, Yazawa, of course, part of their Olympic selection process this race. So uh, the Japanese team will have qualified places in the Olympic Games. The only nation that will have done, because they're the host nation, they get some by right. Everybody else will uh, start that process at the World Championships in La Seo de Hell in Spain at the end of September. And it's a, a good, clean run coming together. Yeah, he's a little cautious on some of the moves, but I think if he can hang it together in these last two upstreams. I came really tight into gate 21, really nice. Uh, kind of slow exit, but I think if he jumps into the back of gate 22 and gets a nice exit from here, we'll look at quite a competitive run time. He'll have to really sprint in these last couple of gates to make it competitive. Ah, he touched the last gate. We're seeing a lot of guys do that because the water level changes there. Um, it's a really strong height difference between the moving water and the eddy line. Well, just waiting to get some uh, information because it uh, just would appear that uh, the live data is just not quite uh, as live as uh, we would like it, but uh, we'll have to wait and see where Kazuki Yazawa of, the, of Japan fits into the standings. But next up, let's turn our attention to the top of the course because it's the 2013 world champion Vavra Haradalek for the Czech Republic. Uh, really excited to see him back on the circuit after a couple of years off the team and uh, well Vavra now sets off on his charge to uh, challenge for the race lead. Yeah Vavra's really a showman um, he's extremely experienced he can uh, he's very very strong as well so he's good at coping with anything the water throws at him. 0 0.8 down on the split but uh, we're just waiting to see exactly where that's likely to put paddlers in the final. Well, he's in touch. That's uh, all that matters for Favre. And yeah, as you say, a really charismatic paddler and uh, will always put his heart and soul into every run. Doesn't always uh, deliver it because of that. 
but uh, I always love watching his paddling. Yeah, he's really dynamic. Ah, he just clipped gate 13 on the exit. It's um, a difficult bit of water to cope with the uh, nice upstream in gate 14, but we have seen already from Vit that the time is in the bottom section, um, although Vavro is carrying a lot of penalties into this part, so we'll have to do something pretty special to make it to the final now. Yes, it's, uh, two touches in the two upstream gates. In fact, one of them just been taken off, so maybe that was uh, someone a little bit... Uh, bit to uh, fingers and thumbs on the keypad. Oh, but, uh, nice up in gate 21, really smooth exit. We'll see him kick it on the right into this last gate. And that's exactly what everybody was trying to do. So you saw that he swept his nose down on the right paddle, caught it again on a reverse, and then swept around with the left paddle. Well, it's upstream. a superb run for Favre Haralek of the Czech Republic, uh, but it's only good enough for 10th place. And that penalty could well be the difference because, uh, well, his time is, uh, yeah, just, well, it's 4.39 seconds down on his compatriot, Vip Prindis of the Czech Republic, who is leading the way. So we are now getting towards the ability to confirm who has qualified. So it is at the moment Vip Prindis for the Czech Republic in pole position, essentially our race leader, Mathieu Madora of France in second, Michael Smolan of the United States in third, but on course now, Ben Hayward of Canada. Yeah, Ben's a really dynamic paddler and um, very strong, and he'll often try stuff that nobody else is willing to try, so I'm really excited to see what he does here. Uh, very smooth through the first section, um, showing a little bit of reserve. He's 1.1 down on the split, um, but I think he'll be wanting to carry as much speed as he can through this section. He won't let the speed on the boat ease off. You can see that he's going to aim for the spin here, and I think we may see forwards on gate 12. Ah, uh, he's having to spin, though. His you nose could, is being held up by the edges. You can see he's working hard to try and deliver it forwards, but you're right. The right decision there for Ben Hayward as he comes in and out of 13. So he was in touch at the top split, just 1.1 second down. Yeah. But uh, this... Uh, Padlo, who's been on the circuit for some time and is one of those where when he finds the groove, then he really is quick. But consistency is the name of the game. Oh. And, well, he's certainly good through there. He's still in touch on the split and uh, hopefully he will be able to find something special on this bottom section. Yeah, he's super fast through this section, really tight. And he's just let his nose drop a little early. And you can see from the water there, it's so hard uh, to control. It's the same uh, as happened to Schweikers of Germany. Yeah. And uh, yeah. He's rejected. He went in too tight to 21, and uh, the disappointment, unfortunately, for Ben Hayward of Canada, who uh, will not progress any further in this competition. So, uh, yeah, disappointment there. Oh, so hard. Well, the Slovak fans are starting to make some noise now because the next competitor to start will be Martin Halchin who is a two-time under-23 European champion. He's a two-time junior world champion. And, uh, well, if he can uh, really find the groove here on this course in front of his home crowd, then he will book himself a place in the final. Yeah, um, Martin's a resident of Liptovsky Mikolash, um, so he does spend a lot of time on this course as well as in Liptovsky. Um, He'll have grown up here, racing here, being super competitive with the other cable men here. Um, we're going to see a masterclass in Bratislava, I think. And I think he's up. He is yeah. half a second up on the top section. That's absolutely what is required. Totally. And you can see, even though it's super inconsistent water and the level changes a lot, um, the truly world-class paddlers are able to cope with it. They have the same conditions as everyone else. He just brought it around really nicely on the forwards move there on gate 12 and super nice around the inside pole on 13. Yeah, and uh, Martin Halsen now going well for Slovakia. Still, I think he's going to have increased the advantage as he comes down towards the split of our race leader, Vip Prindis. Look at that. He has 1.18 oh. seconds now and looking still very calm, very composed. Yeah. Now, this is the business end of the course into the upstream 21. How many times has he done that? Well, oh, <laughs> so nice into the back. Ah, he's getting a little stuck on the exit, though. He's having to fight and get his nose down over to the right-hand side. Still staying really calm, making sure that he stays close to that inside pole on the exit of gate 22. Well, and surely we're watching him paddling for a place in the final. Martin Halsen of uh, Slovakia now coming towards the finish line into yeah. second place. And yeah. he knows he's delivered something special there. 90.94 his time. And, well, a little bit sticky on the bottom section, but um, 
it is a good performance there and we are now into the final 10 competitors in this semi-final so we'll soon be able to confirm who has made it through but Vit Prindis for the Czech Republic is in pole at the moment ahead of Martin Halsin of Slovakia and Matteo Madore of France those yeah. are the top three but it's France on course now and it's the world champion from 2014 from memory it's Boris Novo and uh, very, very fast paddler when he gets his uh, boat in the groove. Yeah, you can see him watching the water right ahead of his boat. He's reacting to what the water's doing. He's not trying to force it, so he's really with the flow. He's not having to use too much energy on the top section, so he's really set up to blast down the bottom bit. Well, he was fourth at the World Championships last year, and he's always in and around the finals. Boris is a superb record in uh, this competition. Yeah, so I'm setting up for forwards on gate 12 there, not quite getting the nose around for the left-hand pull, uh, sliding a little wide in 13. I think that's why we're seeing a lot of time being lost for the cable men. Well, he was in touch on the top split, and I think he's uh, still going to be in touch as he comes down through gate 16 to 17. Yeah, he's making some time up, I think. Well, 0.32 down, that is going to be OK, I think, to make it into the final. He's just got to deliver this move, which is not easy. <laughs> Oh, he's really low in the upstream. But look but at the boat is, speed. Yeah, he's carrying the speed up through the back of the eddy, so he's not actually losing too much time compared to the guys who are coming too tight and being unable to hold the height. Well, and that was so nice around gate 22. He's fighting a little bit for 23, make sure he doesn't touch the gate and power into the finish line. Well, effortless on the, the uh, bottom move and oh. into fourth place. So has to force it a little bit, but uh, he's got to be pleased that he's in the mix. 91.35. But what that does mean is that, uh, by my reckoning, that I think it would put uh, the current race leader, Vit Prindis, into the final. Have to wait and confirm that, but uh, let's turn our attention to the top of the course because we have the legend that is Peter Kauser of Slovenia on course, world number two. And, uh, well, we would expect to see something special. He won a uh, world title here on this course at the World Championships in 2011. And, well, he's pretty much won everything there is to win in this sport. And uh, I know the one thing missing as he went into the Rio Olympic Games was an Olympic medal. Well, he made sure that he took one away. He took the silver medal from Rio, and he's in touch on the top split. Yeah, Peter's a master of white water. He has a really nice lifestyle. You can see that his boat stays on top of the water, so his nose and tail is free to completely control through the gates. He chose forwards there on gate and he's choosing forwards as well on gate 12. This is looking super fast. He's going to smash into gate 13 and make sure that he comes tight around the inside pole. Hopefully going to sweep the next up so that he can make a tight exit and really take this stagger on at the same speed as the water. Well, let's watch now as he comes down through the downstream sequence. He's going to be in touch at the split. It's going to be slightly down, but uh, Pedicalza, very experienced paddler. And it's... Uh, in touch, less than a second down. Yeah, he's not having to do any. Prindis. He's only doing forward strokes here. See how he takes it on the left blade so fast into gate 21. That's the best we've seen it all day. Well, he's... the grandstand erupts uh... as he does that because they know how difficult it is. And Peter Kauser surely has found some time here, but he's surely paddling for a place in the final. And uh, he is effortless over the finish line into third place. Uh... And uh, whilst that's, he'll have to wait and see that whether would... that's confirmed. Um, then, in my opinion, that is uh, going to be good enough yeah, for the final. Yeah, I think that'll be fast enough. It was very bold. He did stop sprinting before the finish line, so I'm really impressed at his confidence. Um, that's very cool to see. It's especially cool when you do make the final with that, So uh, especially when the men's uh, runs can be so tight. It can be margins of a second between 10th uh, and 11th. So that does mean, um, I was a bit premature on uh, Vit Prindis, but it does mean that Vit Prindis is into the final. He's our current race leader for the Czech Republic, ahead of Martin Halsin of Slovakia, Peter Kauser of Slovenia. But of course, next up, we still have nine boats to go in this uh, semi-final. And on course, Samuel Hernans of Spain. And Samuel, well, hasn't been as, quite as dominant as he was at, at uh, one part of his career but he's certainly still capable of putting in a uh, good performance. He's a two-time European Championship medalist. Uh, he was fifth in the 2012 Olympic Games. 
Yeah, he's, he's having to fight a little bit through the top section, um, but he's staying composed for the next part. Uh, this wave section is difficult, so people want to get their noses down to make sure that they can go forwards on gate 12. Um, but you can see that he's just relaxing, making sure that he can stay tight. Really wide, he's having to duck off of the outside pole on gate 13. We are seeing some problems there, a lot of people taking up touches. Well, Samuel Hennam's whip is it round on 14. You can see how close to the pole he is, and uh, he is showing a clean run still, but 2.42 seconds down, and having to work really hard to get back oh. into 18. And did he just brush that with the back of his buoyancy? Yes, he did, it's confirmed. So he goes really onto his back foot now as he comes into the upstream 21. Oh, it's very tight into gate 21. The thing is, uh... Well, I, I think, well, we'll have to wait and see what the judges think. And yes, a 50 second penalty. So bad news for Samuel Hernandez, but that's good news for the local Slovak fans because it means that Martin Halsin of Slovakia is into the final alongside Vit Brindis. So it doesn't happen for Samuel Hernandez today. 28th. And yeah, uh, it seeing, all went wrong in gate 21. Oh, we're seeing some real tragedies in the last six gate of the course. Um, it, 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 like I said earlier on, um, these last six gates are some of the hardest moves you'll see in slalom, especially the up left to up right on the bottom drop. Well, that's uh, two boats in, and the Slovakians have a boat in the final. So next up, it is the Polish paddler. Michal Pasiut, who was a finalist at last year's World Championships. And, uh, well, he was seventh at Lee Valley last weekend. So uh, producing some strong performances and battling his way through the top section into contention. Yeah, the Polish hill men are really strong. Um, it's cool to see a new face on the World Cup circuit. Um, Michal Pasiut spends a lot of time training with the Austrians as well, with Vicky Wilcott. Um, so they're all really experienced. They have some really competitive training groups. Um, and everyone's learning from each other, which is super cool. He's going forwards on gate 12. That was super smooth. Um, just trying to make sure that he can hug the inside pole of gate 13. Coming really wide, avoiding touching the pole there. And he's just going to be trying to carry that speed into the upstream at gate 14. Coming really nice around 14. Just making sure that he can get his nose back down again to this stagger. He's going to have to try and make sure that he's the same speed as the water here to carry enough movement through. He's still really in touch with the split. Well, he's working hard, isn't he? He's battling. It's interesting to see the different styles. You see real composure in some paddlers, and Mikhail Passi really working hard as he comes into the upstream. Great line in, and oh, he's carried so the boat nice. speed. That was a beautiful upstream. We'll just see if he can take it into this next up as well. He's not trying to do the uh, favoured reverse to sweep there, which I think is a sensible option because it means he'll carry the speed out into the well, flow. Well, it's very competitive. He's racing to the finish line and into second place and yeah. into the final for Mikhail Pasiot of Poland so another major final there for him so the leaderboard it is still Vit Prindis for the Czech Republic leading and into the final Mikhail Pasiot of Poland in second and into the final Martin Halsin of Slovakia is third and into the final so it is Peter Kauser still waiting for Slovenia to see if he's done enough but here on course is the world champion from 2018 Hanisch Eigner of Germany he's an Olympic medalist from the London 2012 Olympics fourth in the Rio Olympic Games and uh, well you'd never count this man out from uh, bringing a battle to to you but uh, he left it late on five <laughs> yeah he was super late there uh, he trusted the curl to do what he wanted it to do though um, he knows what it takes to make it to the final here, so he'll be staying um, in the middle of the gates, German style. He's still up on the split, though. This is looking great. Really nice run so far. Great. Hugely strong paddler, Hanisch, and uh, yeah, looking very calm. Like you say, he is in touch. He's up on the split, yeah. and uh, he'll go for the spin. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of the athletes going for the spin in order to get tight in and out of the upstream 13. Yeah, I, I'm not sure the spin's the best option there, because it does put you really high on the wave, which means it's hard to make sure you stay tight around the inside pole of the upstream, but he managed that really well. Well, it's a um, quick time coming together from Hanish Eigner as he comes down towards the uh, second split, and yes, he uh, has extended his advantage, and he's looking very composed. He's really being able to still pull hard on the blade through the downstream section. That's where you find the time. Now he's got to be precise, oh, and he is great. just that. Oh, that was perfect. He, he threads the needle on 21, and equally very composed on 22. Hanish Eigner is paddling to a place in this final here in Bratislava. Sneaks off 23. Now he's going to be the race leader, is he? Yes, he is. Uh -huh. And into the race lead 
And it's Aigner of Germany. Well done. You are in the final. Such a nice run. Um, super cool to see. He wasn't pulling super hard the whole way down. He was just making sure that he was in the middle of every gate, making sure that he was flat and composed for the whole thing. Well, we get our breath back because we still have six boats to go uh, in this, the men's kayak semi-final here with the ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup. Vitprint is leading uh, ahead. Oh, sorry, it's Hannes Eigner leading ahead of Vitprindis in second place and Mat uh, Mikhail Pasiut of Poland in third as Antoine Lonnet launches his campaign for a place in the final. 12th last weekend, just missing out on the final in Lee Valley. What can he do today? Antoine Lonnet has really improved over the last few years. Um, he's kind of been a bit of an underrated paddler. Um, we often watch him on the World Cup circuit to see exactly how he does the upstreams because he makes them really nice and fast and usually on one stroke. Um, so, yeah, a, a bit of a underrated name in this, I think, but it'd be really cool to see what he can do here. He's very in control at the moment, a really powerful paddler. I think he's going to choose the spin option on gate 12 and make sure that he carries some speed up into 13 so that he's not taking it to the back of the eddy. Well, Antoine is uh, now coming down through into 14 and starting to get to the business end of the course. We'll see where he stacks up. He was competitive on the first split, but he's going to be down on the next split. He's two nine seconds down, and if we look at the overall, then in order to get qualified, well, he's right on the bud on the bubble there, really. So he can't afford to let that. Oh, he's extend nine. anymore, but he's nailed 21. He's tightened 21, um, a little bit of a sticky exit, but he's jumping into gate 22. Uh, you have to really hold it on the right-hand blade there. It's not easy to get your nose back down again, but he's looking like he's got a very easy sprint to the finish. He's used the water to perfection. But he's lost a bit uh, of time on the bottom section, and look at that. How tight are we here? Ninth <sighs> place. He didn't really do anything wrong, but no, uh, he, just you get on the wrong little strokes and uh, you're wrong side of the tents yeah, it's and crazy. suddenly you're out. But that's good news for Peter Kauser of Slovenia, who now joins uh, Hannes Eigner, Vit Brindis, Mikhail Pasiut and Martin Halsen in the final. Now we have another local here, Andre Malik. Um, he's based in Bratislava, so he is really familiar with this course. It'd be great to see what he can do. Um, the locals here might be able to cope with mistakes better than non-local paddlers, just because they'll understand the water and see how it can help them through some of the most difficult sections. Well, really let's nice. have a look at the top part of the course because he looks super smooth, super flowing for Andre Malik, who yeah, was uh, silver Junior World Championships back in 2013. Oh, and, uh, so fast through this first section. You can see him really using the water here. He knows when to put the speed on. He's taking it nice and slowly through here, setting up for a good spin in gate 11. And I think we'll see him go forwards in gate 12. He'll know it gives... Ah, he just let his nose get caught on the right-hand side a little bit. Getting caught by that rock. He's going to have to get his nose up to stay close to the inside pole of gate 13. Well, the Slovak fans in the grandstand now opposite gate 14 really making some noise as they're looking to get a second boat into this men's K1 final here in Bratislava in Slovakia. And he's still in touch. Nice. He has dropped some of that advantage, but Andre Malik is going very well as he comes down towards this uh, move into 21. Yeah, he's looking great in the last few downs. Just see if he can nail this upstream. Oh, super tight there, but I think he got his head around it fine. He'll be looking for a good exit. He has two seconds to play with from the last split. Very early into gate 22, got his head around the gate, and he's going to have to push it to the finish the whole way down. We'll wait to see what the judges think about the last couple of gates. Well, he's gunning it to the finish. It's going to be outside the lead time, but importantly, Slovakia's Andre Malek joins his compatriot Martin Halsen in the final. And it is still Hanish Eigner leading ahead of Vit Brindis. And then Andre Malek goes into third place. I have to say, an asterisk just showing on the results, so that's still provisional yeah, at this stage. I think you were right, though. I think it's going to be a clean men's final. Um, we're seeing that a touch right now for any of the competitors would put them below 10th, so a touch is catastrophic at this stage. So next start with four boats to go in this semi-final. It is Yuri Priskovic, the world champion from 2015 the olympic uh, silver medalist no bronze medalist from rio 2016 and a very very competitive paddler 
is on course. Yeah, he's really coping with the water well here. You can see him making sure that he's in the middle of the gates. Um, I think we'll see some exciting upstreams later on, but you can see him not doing anything particularly special. He's only a second down in the split, but Yuri is very well known for gaining speed through down the course. Hugely consistent paddler. Then uh, you'd expect Yuri to make it through into the final. In fact, last weekend he took the silver medalist. <laughs> Uh, position in Lee Valley he and how fast was that he almost overshot after 12 yeah he's just gone forwards on 11 and 12 and managed to stay really tight to the pole in 13 I think he'll be taking a lot of speed off the other guys there so you see he's able to really relax and stay very composed in the next section so he, very light paddler and uh, able to really use his strength to uh, his power to rate ratio very good and he's still in touch uh, at the end of the day he is nearly a second down but that's all he needs to do is get into the top 10 and into the final yes yeah, winding up wide here pushing down on the left blade really nice into the upstream getting a little stuck on the exit you can see how shallow the water is there well let's hope he had a shave this morning because he's that close to the upstream pole on 21 yeah. and look at that Yuri Preskovich oh, on the Czech really Republic tight on the last game. is having to check it and challenge at the bottom and is he going to take it into the final yes he is into fifth place oh, that's another paddler who just stopped sprinting before the finish line it's really bold but very cool <laughs> well it is Hannes Eigner, Vit Prindis, Andrei Malek, Mikhail Pasiut, Yuri Priskovic, Martin Halsin and Peter Kauser are qualified through and still three boats to go to determine the final qualifiers and uh, well France sitting in eighth and ninth at the moment waiting to see if they've done enough but Poland's Darius Popiela is now on course and uh, he well, he's had a good season so far. Silver at the 2019 European Championships in Pope. He missed out only just, though, from the final last weekend in Lee Valley. Yeah, the Polish K1 man's team is super strong. Um, he's an experienced paddler again. There's so many good guys in this semi-final. Um, see him fighting a little with the water there, but he's nearly a second up on the first split. Super cool to see. Um, he's carrying loads of speed through that flat, uh, flat section. Um, and now he's taking the spin on in gate 11. Well, it's going to be tight, and uh, the time he needs to be is, well, he needs to be within 2.4 seconds at the uh, of the race leader, who is Hanisch Eigner of Germany at the moment. And uh, Darius Popiela looking composed, looking comfortable, and uh, it's hugely powerful paddler. Paddles on the, the course in Krakow. Yeah. which is relatively flat water, so uh, you'd expect the paddlers to be really powerful. Yeah, he's still nearly he's half a second up on the second split, which is super cool. Um, yeah, we, we didn't see him showcase anything spectacular like Yuri in the middle section. He just did everything exactly how much he needed to. Really nice into gate 21, getting a little stuck on the exit, but I think he'll have done enough if he can get into gate 22 nicely. That yeah. was good. Well, even ball. now, he's got to get the line through 23. He's got to be able to paddle and not steer. And uh, Darius Popiela is looking good as he comes into the finish line. It's uh, certainly a place in the final. Yeah. Into third place for Poland and into the final. So it is still Matteo Madora of France sitting in ninth place waiting to see if he's done enough two to go and then the fastest two boats from the heats on friday well this is exciting and this is only the semi-final so the final will get underway after the women's c1 final here in bratislava the women's c1 final gets underway at 12 o'clock central european time but next up for australia lucien delfort yeah, you, Lucian's a really smooth paddler. Um, he trains on Penrith with the Australian team. He's Australian team. Um, we'll see him using the water here a lot more than some of the other paddlers. He's not well known for being a powerhouse, but he can use the curls to his advantage. Well, let's watch Lucien Delfort because uh, he has a really a exciting attacking style of paddling. Like you say, smooth, but he's a real risk taker and it doesn't always work to his advantage. Yeah, not always. Um, he just needs to be able to stay calm in the most difficult moves and make sure that he's not spending too much energy at the top. Well, it hardly looks like he's trying at all yeah. as he comes into 11 and 12, but that's because he's absolutely spotting the line. He's done that. 11, he's taken on 12 forwards, now runs into 13, and we'd expect him to sweep oh, nicely round there. So really he was in smooth. touch at the split. He was just point one of a second down, and this is looking like a real control paddle yeah. from Lucien as he comes down towards this split. Is he even going to have an advantage? Well, he's certainly going to still be in touch. Yeah, he's really close. Oh. 
Oh, and I think he's just, he has, he's just <sighs> straight lined and, and he's missed 17. Oh, that's so upsetting because he was having a really controlled, no risks run. He's uh, just coming above gate 21 as well. I wonder if he knew that he had a half head on gate yeah, 17. Yeah, the concentration's gone. He's missed 21, he's missed 22. And unfortunately, Australia's Lucien Delfort will not progress into the final. So bad news for him, um, but it's good news for Mathieu Madore of... Um, France, who yeah. will be our next qualifier. That was really brutal. Uh, Mathieu Inn will be super stoked to be in the final. I feel for Lucien because that was shaping up to be an amazing run, but well, these things happen. Lucien just looks so composed, but there we see it. Doesn't get his whole head inside the gate line of gate 17. And well, again, another example of uh, how brutal the uh, sport is, but well, actually, it is Boris Nouveau sitting in 10th place for France, and it is France last down. So France guaranteed a finalist. It's just who is it going to be? We already know it's uh, Mathieu Madora, but also is it Boris Nouveau or Quentin Bergy? Yeah, he, uh, the gate's moving at three. I think he picked up a two second penalty there, but again, very good at using the water. He was great in London, um, really masterclass the white water there so it'd be great to see what he can do here we're well, seeing that you can get into the final with the two second penalty Matteo and Nado um, already picked a two second penalty um, so Quinton can be within 2.5 seconds of the fastest time and still make the final well Quinton was a bronze medalist at the European Championships in uh, Po earlier on this season just a month or so ago so he is very capable of getting in that, that high pressure but he's, he's deep in 13 it's things like that where just the fraction of a second start to tick away. Yeah, he's super tight around the ups. He is staying very calm though. You can see that he's using the water. He's not feeling rushed into any of the moves. He is taking a lot of speed into this section though. I hope he can keep under control. He did take another touch there on the bow, I think, or it could have been a water touch. He might not have touched it. We'll have to wait and see, but he was, he's effectively absorbed a lot of his penalty on the upstream gate three, um, but oh. he's in too tight for 21 and it's game over oh, now. No. And Quentin Bergy of France rejected on 21 and it's all over for the paddler who was fastest in the heats and it's not going to be a place in the final but his compatriot Boris Novo the world champion from 2014 does mean he's into the final so provisional results here in Bratislava Slovakia is Hanesh Eigner takes the win in the semi-final. He'll go off last in this afternoon's final. But yeah. there we see Quentin Pershing too early on 21. Such a fine margin. So you've got to go in high, but that's what happens if the Eddie really grips your boat. Yeah, we've seen a crazy semi-final here. Only 18 men out of, No, 17 men out of 40 paddlers have actually gone without a 50-second penalty. So there we have it. Only one person in the top 10 with a touch. Such is the tightness and that's Mathurin Medora of France but Hannes Eigner, the world champion goes through in first place ahead of Fit Brindis of the Czech Republic Darius Popiela of uh, Poland uh, they'll go off as the last three in this afternoon's final big names missing from there well there's a, there's a few names. It's good. I think uh, shout out to Finn Butcher there of New Zealand because uh, that was an outstanding performance and uh, unfortunately missing out in 13th place. Um, there we have it. Lucien Delfort, uh, probably a surprise uh, person not in the final. Yeah, there was some savage paddling there. It was such a tight margin to make the final, especially considering how difficult that course was. Um, really impressed with some of the men. Um, yeah, it's crazy, only 17 men not having 50-second penalties. Um, I did expect there to be a lot of 50s, but not as many as that. That was pretty crazy. Well, that concludes the semi-finals racing here in Bratislava, Slovakia, for the second of uh, five ICF Kinnuslala World Cups this season. And we've seen the women's C1 and the men's K1 in action. And, well, 40 boats we watched in this men's K1 semi-final and just 10 into the final and we saw just how challenging the course is but still the best in the world managed to keep it pretty much clean just one person managing to get down into the final with a penalty yeah what a crazy semi-final so excited to watch later well for me andy maddock and uh, thank you very much to amber maslin for joining me in the commentary box then I'll be back this afternoon with the women's C1 and the men's K1 finals here 
And that gets underway at 12 o'clock Central European time. Don't miss out because there's some exciting action ahead. And of course, 3 o'clock this afternoon Central European time, we will have the extreme slalom here. So for, well, only around about 15 minutes, that's it from Bratislava in Slovakia for the ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup 2. And uh, we'll be back with the finals of the women's C1 and the men's K1. Thanks, Andy. Bye for now.